Hey guys, I was really confused when I got the address because I kept putting it into Google and it was like, that's the mayor's office. And I was like, that can't be right. Uh, but I see it, it feels oddly intimate to be just like here while this is happening. No, yeah. d- don't mind them. It's a real communal atmosphere. It's- this is Spike, Dennis, um, and Lolita. And they are giving us tattoos, uh, actually. Um, I could see that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hey, so Schneider, it's good to see you. Can you just wait? Spike, I want it all on the left cheek. Okay, just all of it. Uh, and <sighs> uh, Lolita, I will take it all up the thigh, if possible, just so that when I stand akimbo, you know, you can read the whole thing. I, I will say, Mikey, that's a bold choice to go with the face tattoo. Yeah, you know, I I, I was going to go, I was going to go... Um, on the back, but then if I if I did it on the back, no one would be able to see it. So you know, I gotta I gotta own it. You know. Well, I gotta run for office again at some point, so I'm getting the tramp stamp. Good. Lovely. What's Lovely. the um? What is the uh, line break situation on that, Dennis? Because I mean, we've got a long couple words like Mary Xmas, we love you, Michael, Jeffrey, Ali, Deborah, Ray. Are you doing like Star Wars crawl of a tramp stamp, or are you like doing a belt? What's the plan, uh, you there, know, Alex? We're just we're just gonna go for it and see what happens. Okay, <laughs> uh, I, you've That's, been working for like seems twenty like minutes. A, uh, a, yeah, yeah, an interesting it. attitude to go uh, into a tattoo with, Dennis. Hey. We shouldn't have drawn straws for tattooers. Uh, how do you spell Jeffrey? Is it with the J or is it with the with the G O bullshit? That's actually a G E O. Ah, uh, okay. Hold on. <laughs> oh, <Seems>. Boy. <laughs> Oh, I got, I got it. It's, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, big black go. paint roller over the uh, the thigh there. That is interesting. Yeah. yeah, that's why we have white out. Um, so Schneider, we're almost done. I think I'm down to Ally right now. So just Deborah and Ray left. Um, but it's very uh, ornate how you guys are doing it. Like with the big, almost looks like the first letter in a medieval manuscript. That's yeah. Well, I mean, we've this, been here. This I imagine is, it's gonna take a minute. What is this, like, hour three, guys? Because we've had them illuminate the first letter of each line. Obviously, snails, night, knights fighting snails. Um, you know, monks, nude, plenty of mm-hmm. those. Uh, little toad Mother men. Mary punching a devil. Yeah. Uh, yeah from the got, Beatles? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah you, you, I, I wish I could you got see that one. Mine. That's good. I appreciate that. Someone someone that likes the uh, the, the, the minutia, I appreciate you. Man. Honestly, Dennis, yeah. you don't seem too concerned with minutia <laughs> as you uh, did not have a plan for where you were going to put Alex's tattoo, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm just like, saying yeah. it's going to impact but your... But like, it looks cool. It looks cool. You got Mary punching the guy. It's great. This is... Sounding like it's not what I what I wanted. Do you guys do tattoo rescue? We should have asked you up front, but do you do tattoo rescue? None of my tattoos need rescuing. Okay, that's Dennis's answer, Spike. Yeah, yes. Okay, Lolita, do you do tattoo you, rescue? You know, I'm not really good with it, but if you want me to kind of like just send it, do my best, you know, see what we can do. Maybe we can turn your ex's name into a pretty little bird or something. Okay, that sounds good. I like you. You're the you're my favorite one of the tattoo. Yeah. I'm glad we got matched up. That quiz, by the way, was intense when we did that quiz. Which tattoo artist is right yeah. for you? Yeah, I'm so happy you got. Yeah, well, I mean, we both answered that our favorite episode of Everybody Loves Raymond was season three, episode 12, The Toaster. And that's how I knew, like, you would be the perfect one for this tattoo in particular. Yeah, of course. If you could just get a little deeper into your Kimbo stance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me deep squat and almost touching the floor. And there we go. Thankfully, it's humid in here. Um, Perfect. Yeah, wow. there you go. You want a you want a mug for that tea bag? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> One more question, guys. Uh, it's, uh, Michael, Michael, does it have uh, two K's or is that a Q? <laughs> Dennis, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> It's an, it's, it's an it's H Mary X- and a silent W. Yeah, we, we know. It's Mary Xmas, Love, Jeffrey, Michael, Allie, No, Deborah, no, 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 no. It's Mary no. Xmas, We Love You, oh. Michael, Jeffrey. Oh, sorry oh, about that, I gotta start over. Alex. Hold on, hold on. It sounds like the- <laughs> Alex, oh my you got God. a real like Jackson Pollock thing going on right now with all those corrections. <laughs> It'll probably look good. Dennis, they gave each of us a piece of paper that had the tattoo on it. Yeah. And yeah, I brought and- the toaster. I, I bought one of the prop toasters from this episode. And, you know, for because I, you know, I'm doing I don't know what you guys are doing. I'm doing stainless steel lettering. 
So it's sort mm-hmm. of reflective when I do my dance. Well, we've already established that Dennis is doing the medieval illumination. That's true. Yeah, listen, you know, I just I get the sense and then I let then I let the muses <laughs> speak to me. I just Very I just go improvis- for it improvisational yeah. tattooing turning sense the, into nonsense I get the gist in there. there we You're go the, it's, uh, it's all is it see accurate? this is why people with PhDs in history don't make good tattoo artists <laughs> listen hey shut up you you how dare you I've been hey, inspired hey 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 hey, hey. By real do not people. tell her to shut up what the fuck? Get she's, out she's, Dennis she's dissing my Dennis, career track Dennis Everyone's you're fired path is different and I just hey, we do I, not I, talk I, to people like that in this office please leave do we alex i, I it, this one's on me lolita if you wouldn't mind staying after you finish mine to do some rescue on alex's dennis oh, yeah, it'll please. be one of those real cool like collaborative pieces yeah but just mainly just you like if do. you can like put a base down of skin color and then put the proper tattoo <laughs> on it that's probably the best you're, way to you're do. all on my list get two brute you guys don't even get that because it's a reference to Julius Caesar, who was hey, murdered by one. his best hey, friend. Hey, Dennis, I'm, I did I'm my gender. thesis. I... Did my thesis on this shit. Okay. I don't like Dennis. Goodbye. I didn't even get a chance to like say hi. I tried to introduce myself, and he was just you know, it's probably for the best. Okay. Okay. Well, but yeah, hey, buddy, like you, said, what, what are your opinions? Really good Shut the, up, the Dennis. Shut get the out. fuck up, Dennis. I'm trying to tell you. Egyptians, there were no aliens. What? Get the fuck get out. out. <laughs> like I said, Alex, I'm not really good at the whole like at to rescue thing, you know? So I'll, I'm good at putting down original work, but you know, covering something, it's a little more challenging. Don't have a lot of practice, but that's why I'm saying, you know, Less of a cover-up, more of a collaboration. We'll see what we can do. Uh, okay, you know what? Just make it look nice and pretty, and it'll probably be okay. okay. He spelt Jeffrey with a W. Where's the W? You'd be surprised. You yeah. Oh. So, Neato. okay. So, I think I'm done, right? Because you've stopped penning my thigh. So, I'm just going to get up. And um, I'll turn the, the mics on and everything, because Schneider, you were actually supposed to be here at um, 1230. It is... Uh, uh, I'm Like I said, it was kind of hard to, f- to find the place, because the map kept bringing me to the mayor's office, and I yeah, thought that no, not possible. No, no, that's where... Have you not been um, keeping up with the local it's news? It's been a while. You don't know no, about... No, I actually went to the Barone Zone. Yeah, a lot has actually changed since you were last... With us, I don't know if you remember Alex is running for mayor of Limbrook. Yes, yeah, and I remember that. now uh, what was uh, Tyrone Dickey? That's right, Tyrone Dickey. Yeah, um, he had a good platform. Uh, a real sniveling a monster character. of a man um, who mm. was mm-hmm. absolutely trounced in the in the polls at the end of the day. Oh, that's unfortunate. Fifty one to forty nine. Alex took it by a landslide, um, but he's the mayor of Limbrook now. So we do our podcast out of the out of the town hall. Oh well, congratulations! Well, thank you. All right, sorry, I just had to I had to keep my mouth shut while uh, Spike was finishing up mine. I uh, oh you so, went yeah, you I mean, upgraded to gag. You got the gag. Well, yeah, I mean some goofing. It seems that you know talking while while somebody's engraving on your cheek is a is a bad idea generally mm-hmm. speaking. So um, anyway, Spike Spike did a Spike did a pretty good job. He didn't didn't throw much style on it. He just. Exactly did what I what I asked. He just wrote the words. And yeah. uh, I think that's I think there's there's something special to that. You know what? If if it's just what you get, if it's what you ask for, I think that's a pretty good tattoo. Oh, I'd say so too. By the way, uh we set up Yeah, hold on, let me oh, just uh, I have yeah. to plug in the uh fourth mic. Uh so, okay, so I, I just I just want to clarify. Uh Adam, did you just ask Mikey if he Upgraded to the gag? Yeah, so the way, I don't know if you've ever gotten a uh, concierge tattoo where they go to you, they come to you, and Mm -hmm. they bring like a little doctor case, like a toolkit of various accoutrements, obviously the tattoo gun itself. If you're not looking to spend so much, you can do it middle school style where they crack open a ballpoint pen. Um, And then, of course, there's, like, the restraints that you would have in a normal tattoo parlor when you're getting extensive work done. Uh, 
handcuffs. Obviously, Mike went for the handcuffs, fluffy, pink. Yeah, no. Um, yeah. You know, stocks. You can get stocks, you know, yep. where you'll put I, your I decided not to go for that. That was tattoos. Too, too big of an upcharge, but they did that. They did that. They did the, uh, they did the neck brace, too. It was, it yeah. was pretty solid. Yeah. Collar. It's I actually collar. put about a quarter of my clients in a penis prison. <laughs> Ooh, hey, it doesn't help that. with the tattoo at all. It's just sort of a mental thing. Does that cost extra? Oh, does it? Co- uh, no, it's really just for me. Okay. How are you concerned about overcrowding in the penis prison? Uh, you know, I have various different sizes. Okay. You know, okay. it's suppo- and I always just size down because you know the snugness. That's what we're looking. For. Mm-hmm. It's like a Simon Cowell T-shirt <laughs> or V-neck, I should say. I like you. Yeah, we like All you. Things. Do you want to be like the fourth permanent yeah, host Schneider, of the go. podcast? <laughs> no, guys, Schneider came all the way. He found the mayor's office. No, he can office. still be the yeah. guest. I'll just have to plug in the fifth mic because I kind of, I like the energy that Lolita, obviously we need a woman on the show. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, the feminine energy that Mike G. has been bringing hasn't exactly been it. Hey, 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 don't, don't, don't do that. That's, uh, that, I don't, I don't know if that's fair. That's, uh, I, I try my best. I try to balance these guys. I'm trying to balance these, these epitaphs of masculinity out with my own, uh, with my you own You mean self. epitome? That's it. No, no, no. The, the epitaphs of <laughs> No, epitaphs. Yeah. Which is the inscription on a gravestone, correct? Uh, that's it. That's, yeah. that's the one. That's the one. Okay, good. So then I ordered the right thing. Isn't that also what you call, like, at the very beginning of a book or something. That's be like called a, a... That's the epilogue. No, it's Wait. not. No, that's the, not de- it. the dedication, you mean? The, the no, 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 front? not the dedication. <sighs> epigraph, what, maybe? The EpiPen? Epigraph, that's it. Yeah. It's an epigraph. No, no, it is. He, he's right. It is an epitaph. Obviously, I got... Did um, you know that the name epigraph comes hey, get from... Get the fuck epigraph. out of here, Dennis! Dennis, please. Get out of here, fucking <sighs> Guys, Dennis. I have interesting factoids. Dennis, I swear to God, I will change the locks on you. You Oh, won't. you gave him the penis prison? No, I mean to the tattoo parlor, but that too. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'll be back for you, Lolita. I'm not being trapped in here forever. I don't know if you want to go on a recording saying I'll be back for you, Lolita, but... <laughs> Someone lock the door. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Bye, Dennis. Dennis anyway, uh- welcome back to Everybody Loves Everybody Loves... <laughs> Ravens. Good. Lo- oh my God. Lolita is staying around. Great. Okay. So uh, let me plug everything else in, and we are rolling. So Schneider, have a seat, please. Uh, and Alrighty. Lolita, if you want to just, uh, you can have my seat. Uh, I will stand. Uh, yeah. So test. Okay. One, we don't one, have to two. raise the mic. One, two. Is that how? Those that levels how you are do good. That? Yes. Yes. Your uh, levels yep, are that's good. That's perfect. That sounds, that sounds very sweet. So here we all are. Today, talking about another episode of Everybody Loves Raymond. This week's episode is episode 12 of season 3, uh, The Toaster. Raymond and Dever give Frank and Marie a toaster for Christmas. When Marie returns the toaster that she has no clue, uh, which was specially engraved for her and Frank, uh, they set out to retrieve the toaster and hijinks ensue. Mm-hmm. You can call me Alex Shear. I'm the mayor of Limbrook, and I'm joined with not one... Not two, not four. Uh, oh, wait. Yeah, actually. I'm joined by four wonderful people. Um, and Mike oh. is one of those people. Hey, hey, everybody. I'm Mike G. I am the uh, apparently tattoo publicity uh, officer for the town of Limbrook, New York. And we, uh, we're, we, we, we got inspired by today's engravings. And we, uh, we all decided to get group tattoos of the, of the actual engraving. It's great Tat- to be here. Tattoo publicity. What do you mean? Like you hang, uh, hand out flyers with like apricots on them or? No, no. Limbrook has a great subculture of specifically uh, uh, tattoo artists that has gone unsung in this town for far too long. We've got great tattoo artists like called uh, such as Totally Tattoo, uh, Tattoo uh-huh. Palooza, uh-huh. um, Tattoo City. They're not very imaginative <laughs> names, but they're all very, very, uh, very great artists. And uh, I think it's time that we, as a town, recognize them. We're so happy to invite uh, invite these three. Well, now two uh, artists with us here today. But we got uh-huh. we got Spike, who has been quiet, but he he's the one that marked me up. Um, I'm Spike. Anyone, anyone tell oh, us that's anything? it. Okay, yeah. Spike, right. Spike is a real short, sweet to the point. I like you, Spike. Spike's a man of few words. Okay. Hi, I'm Lolita. Um, 
Kathy is is what my my actual name is. They call me Lolita because I really like Nabokov, not for any other reason. <laughs> I'm Spike. We got it. Yeah, we know. <laughs> You're so sweet. And okay. Uh, <laughs> and well, um, and me also. Uh, hi, I'm Adam Rudy. I am the franchisee, hopefully, pr- uh, prospective franchisee of the new branch of Bloomingdale's here in Limbrook. I'm, uh, it's going to be taxpayer funded, taxpayer owned, and of course, taxpayer run. So come on down. Well, we're not open yet, but when we're open, come on down. And, uh, yeah. and lastly, oh. I think we've hit everyone now. Schneider, did you introduce yourself it's, and I didn't? I got confused because I forgot that Spike was here. Oh, no, I'm his ride home. I guess I have. I guess we have five people here. So aside from me, this is a crowded table. Yeah. We've never had this many people. First of all, for those of us that are listening to the, for, the, for the first time, this is uh, Joseph Robert Schneider. He is a. Uh, hey, I, have lot- a I have a new name now. Oh, you do. What's your yeah, new put name? Put that all in there. Oh, that's right, Joseph Robert Catherine Schneider. I apologize, I forgot. Uh, that, 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 that's right, Schneider. Uh, Schneider is an improviser, a clown, comedian a uh thinker of our time he is <laughs> <laughs> he thinks yeah uh and we got one- i love how this is my third time on this podcast and none of the times have we ever <laughs> talked about how you would introduce me prior <laughs> that, that is correct that is correct listen i just gotta ask this is the first time in a while that you've been back have you uh, been keeping up with ray or the town of limbrook at all uh no can't say i have uh, the last episode of Everybody Loves Raymond I watched was the last episode that I covered on this show. So there's there's a there's a gap. That's okay. It's okay. You know what? Uh, I don't really watch the show either. It's fine. Sorry. Uh, tell us your constituents now. Yeah, I was going to say, you kind of I really, I haven't been following local politics much, but it's my understanding that that's the whole shtick. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll cut that out. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, yeah, no, we got it. We got it. We got it. We'll, 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 we'll cut that. Today... We're talking about it, season three, episode twelve. Do you have any general thoughts on the on the episode there, Schneider? Uh, well, so every episode that I've been on this show for has had a different intro. True. Uh, yeah. This had, uh, what, what what was it? Was it Ode to Joy? Yeah. Yeah. Was, to that's, Joy. that's the one. This is yeah. the one that sticks out for a long time after this. Yeah, that's insane. Um, because I actually thought the episode was starting when the intro started uh and then oh what so you they thought they were making te- some big changes yeah, to the format like throw a teddy bear at the at the sound system and it explodes like who did that wiring like the budgeting <laughs> i don't know so I, is this, I really is this intro ahead, better Michael. or worse in your opinion than the anti-gravity opening that's the worst fucking thing i've ever seen <laughs> in my life yeah at least this exists in a base reality the the anti gravity one is deeply, deeply, deeply stupid, and whoever came up with that idea needs to be fired from a cannon. <laughs> wow, I'm pretty sure I read those exact words on our website. Yeah, I was gonna oh. say I think that's that's directly from the uh, the comment section of Everybody Loves Everybody yeah, Loves Raymond. Like the, so, the one with him building the 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 Playset. playhouse in the back. Yeah, that one was uh, fine. Is, that's the first one, right? Yes. Correct. Yep. It, to, to put it in your uh, terms, it is the most grounded and realistic one. Yeah. And Although then the we don't know belt. why a man is just approaching Ray with a camera and asking him to introduce himself in his life, but yeah. Yes. And the, the conveyor belt is at least like that's a thing that exists, mm. and it kind of plays with your expectations of what like a a sitcom intro is because you don't really question it too hard but then he's just like oh these are actually people on a conveyor belt and it's like oh that's funny uh a little meta um and then the the anti-gravity one just i wanted to throw something at my tv uh and then i saw this and somehow like more grounded but just as dumb oh i thought this one was funnier i like this one (laughs) I like this one as well. I think it um, at least has sort of a, like, you can tell what they're going for. They're going yeah. for, like, this action movie kind of thing. Um, yeah. You know, to contrast the very grounded show that we usually see, we're going to blow up a teddy bear with a stereo or vice versa. Um, <laughs> and then I love that the end of this, like, uh, that's the other thing about this is that it is actually a joke. It, it has a premise that has punchlines in it 
of like at the very end, Marie's hand coming through Comes the through letter the slot yeah. and grabs Ray's hair. Um, it, it it adds it's additive to the episode as a whole. I mean, I obviously I skip it now, but the first time I saw it, like it is a know, it's it, a comedy piece. I, I know, but it feels like its own little like everybody loves Raymond Short, which it is. Yeah. That's basically what it is. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel like that's what the genre of like intro is supposed to be i don't think it really does what an intro is designed to do like i i think an intro is suppo- and this is why i don't skip intros uh mm-hmm. even when i'm watching like three or four episodes or oh something. wow we got a we got a, we got a real one su- they're supposed to be like an important part of the pacing of the episode it brings you if it's a television show with a cold open like from the cold open into an intro that's supposed to like you know, set you back to a zero from which the episode will then uh, emerge. <laughs> but like, it's an important part of the episode, uh, and not just like in sitcoms, but in any any television show. Like, it establishes the tone and timbre of what is to come. Having one that it's it's its own little like thing, yeah, kind of feels like it's abdicating its responsibility as the introduction of the show to instead be its own little thing. It's like, no, you have a job, do it. Well, tonally it is, yeah, it's definitely a departure, but it does do a pretty good job and completely without dialogue, although there might be one thing. Um, They're coming. They're coming. coming. It's the show, not tell philosophy. It does a pretty good job of showing the central dynamic and the premise of the show, I think. But It just feels a little like, it's outside yeah. of the genre of a show intro. It doesn't necessarily need to be like a genre piece like it is. I think you're right about that. But yeah. it's also, I mean, it's fun. I don't begrudge it. I obviously prefer it to the anti-gravity opening. At least oh, this I, one, I, they I had the pre- technology. I would just a black screen with the little <laughs> piano fill yeah. and just the title. Just that. Well, they do, they do that, that sometimes. A lot. They actually. do that for the longer yeah. episodes. Yeah. If, when they need the runtime. If they time. have the, the, um, the, uh, if the runtime is 22 minutes without the intro, they will skip the intro. They'll just yeah. go right into the episode. Much like I, you refuse to do. I would honestly do. just prefer a Sopranos cut to black to the anti-gravity. Mm-hmm. To the, like at the end of the episode and we're supposed no, to assume that they like just Ray was right shot the in the back open. of the head. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle. And and then whoever Journey closes place. out the cold open just mm-hmm. in the middle of their last line, <laughs> even if the punchline is coming, you don't get it. Fuck you. Just... <laughs> Cut. Cut. And then the dun, episode dun, starts. Dun, 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 dun. I don't remember how Don't Stop Believing goes. Whenever I hear Don't Stop Believing, I always expect it to cut out in the middle of the chorus, and it does. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. I always start song. believing. I always stop believing out of spite when I hear that song. <laughs> so I haven't shared any of my thoughts on the episode. You That's shared okay. a lot on right. Right. We have a, We have other people to hear from, too. I mean, you know, no offense, but... I'd like to hear from some of our other guests if you don't mind. Yeah, we really filled out the table this week, guys. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. This has never happened before. We've never had a table with more than four chairs. Yeah. Well, I mean, we still don't. That's why I'm a, a good thing. Like I built up my leg strength getting those uh, quad tattoos because my squat has really improved. But yeah, I was gonna say it's gonna like, be you're still all the way down at the ground. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta air that out. I mean, well, I did, and you know, this is just a fun thing that I've been doing. Is I've been you see the tile floor here. I've been replacing it with wet cement to sort of do like a. Uh, Chinese theater thing uh, where I, you know, make the impression uh, in my deep squat and then I sign it and then I have a bunch of those all over the town hall. It's sort of like my own personal walk of fame. Is that why we've been getting calls about tiny, tiny potholes? (laughs) Yeah. Good good, good one, Alex. Nice for bringing us back to middle school with the, the tiny balls joke. Thank you. I, you know, it's I admit, my specialty. I shouldn't have done it during the marbles tournament because I know that that fucked things up a lot. Oh my god, they were mad. Those they would flick their marbles, and I don't know if that's how you play it, but they would flick their marbles and they yeah. go into my impression, and it would sort of like the centrifugal force of it was so much. I mean, that's how that kid died. That's how they lost their marbles. <laughs> Yep. How that kid I, lost. Can, can we vote to kick Alex <laughs> off the show? Hey. No, I kind of like his jokes. Oh, Alex. I'm spiked. Alex does have this effect on people. Lolita, um, what is your sort of take on this episode as a whole? Okay, so I mean, not to have like a hot take or something. Please but, like, do. Contemporarily, 
this episode got like rave reviews. And even like now, if you look at any like Raymond retrospective list, it's like seven, six, five on the list. I don't get it. It's a good really? episode. End of my comments. It is considered okay. a classic. You're definitely then there's definitely a classic line in this episode. Um What is it? It is uh you're a trophy, trophy wife. wife. What contest in hell did I win? It's a good line. I I was I was expecting like a participation trophy. Uh, trophy. Oh yeah, that would have been good too. Yeah, but one line does not a classic episode make. Well, what, what were you expecting, Lolita? What what it, did you pre look at these rankings, or was it was it after the fact? I don't know. Maybe I'm just like the victim of hype to where like. I was seeing everybody else. Like even I'd seen the episode myself, but then I was seeing everybody else just like, oh my God, it's so good. It's so good. And I was like, okay, what did I miss? Let me go back and watch it. And I was just like, I didn't miss anything. It's a fine episode. Well, maybe but divorced from the context of all the other episodes that have come before it, like we've seen them all. So I think maybe our baseline for what a good episode <laughs> is might be a little lower. Yes. I think um, what Adam is trying to say is I think we all have Stockholm Syndrome here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so of. maybe I just have uh, an unnaturally high bar for what I expect an episode of Everybody Loves Raymond to be because I haven't consumed all of the slop that you guys I have. I think so. I think Perhaps. that's the best way to put you're, it. You're a classy woman, Lolita. I, I kind of see this episode being framed almost as like kind of the like a quintessential Raymond episode where it's yeah. like a plot that just feels so very much this show. It's Raymond doing a good thing and then self-sabotaging himself for 20 minutes. I think so. Um, but like, I'm sorry, Adam, go ahead. I think so. Okay. <laughs> um, to Lolita's uh, point, the beautiful, smart, and intelligent woman to my left. Uh, a real love quadrangle yeah, forming I here. I know, little, Mike, you've been making eyes at her. A little. I think Lolita's just trying to get in good with Alex because she's a constituent. Well, she wouldn't be the first. Actually, I'm from Hoboken. Really? You're from Hoboken? You took the path? Do you, do you know the Yeah, no, I'm, I'm like a backwards bridge and tunnel person where I go straight over the city and come to Long Island. Wow. Do you take the yeah. path? No, no, I drive. Oh, do you fascinating. Know so I guess that wouldn't be backwards bridge and tunnel. That'd be like somebody that works in the city lives in the city and works in Hoboken. I live in Hoboken and then just like jump right over the city. Alex, she is fascinating. She is Hoboken. She's something. So to my my point. Uh, <laughs> yes. It, sorry, it, yes, talking? It's a, what? Yes, go. It's sorry, a, sorry. Oh, it's sorry, it's sorry. a fine sorry. episode. It's, it's a fine episode. But, it, you know, to it is a quintessential Ray, almost to the level of parody. Like I, I remember during the, the cold open, I was just like, oh my God, Ray is such a, whiny little dork i hate him yeah. like it was just laying it on so thick we will talk about it with all five of us um or all six of us at the end of the episode when we do the barometer um but this is definitely a ray at his more petulant uh yeah. of the ones that we've seen for sure this is definitely a mode of ray that they write in sometimes that is a very unattractive quality for him yeah. Well, I mean, and hey, I he at least had he at least had a good idea with the with the gift, right? I mean, the gift was pretty cool. No, he didn't. The gift was dumb. The what are thing you talking about, about the gift is that he it seems fine on paper to just that if he got that for his in laws, it's an engraved toaster that says, uh, "Hold on, Mike, can you turn your cheek towards me?" Mary Xmas, yeah, we yeah. love you, Michael Jeffrey, Ali Dorbra, Dorbra. Oh, Ray. Spike. Spike, I think he used the the original spelling of Deborah. No, it's it's it's, uh, it's it, yeah. I think he misspelled it. I think he spelled it D E B R D E B O. But, but my point, <laughs> sorry, not to draw attention to the misspelling on your yeah. cheek. Yeah. Um, that's fine. But we find out over the course of the episode that he has purchased and gifted at least six of these toasters. Like I counted. Like we've got Marie and Frank, Robert, Warren and Lois, Andy, which Andy um, seems odd, but uh, that's actually Linda. true. I didn't even process that before. But just Andy <laughs> having just a, a a toaster signed by his best friend's kids. <laughs> yeah, and like the little... big old kerfuffle that he makes about like the fact that oh, that was a toaster with your son's name. And your grandchildren yeah. and their love. Like, what does that mean to Andy? 
I don't know. I don't know why. It does seem like a, we haven't seen Andy even interact with the kids, really. So it seems weird for them to say, we love you, Andy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust Andy around the kids. Oh. And their names are up front. It's not even yeah, like, that's you know, true. Raymond, Deborah, children. It's children, Deborah, Raymond. It is definitely, and the other person is Linda, Linda and Bernie get one, and Gail. Do Who's you Gail? remember Does who it Gail is? that all the engravings are the same? No, not necessarily. That's true. But is do Gail we really see... Oprah's friend? Yeah, Gail. Because <laughs> they were trying to get on the favorite things. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. Guys, it looks like Spike is waking up. Spike? Spike. Uh, Spike? <laughs> yes? Uh, I think you... Um, we, we discovered, I think you misspelled Deborah. We, it's, you used the biblical spelling. We, we were supposed to use the, the Raymond spelling. He's a very religious man. I'm sorry. Spike, oh. I think we're going to have to let you go, unfortunately. Um, go where? Well, wherever Dennis went, wherever you people go when you're... Oh, please don't Dennis. send him to go with Dennis. Here's okay. Spike, here's the keys to the car. Just go sit in the car. You can turn the AC on and listen to your tapes. My tapes? Can I has a treat? Sure. A, a, you've this is one. fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> nom, 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 is nom, this nom. some sort I'm of, off. you know, S and M relationship? Yeah, L- Lolita. Oh, I really uh, want to know more. You are fascinating. I want. I really want to know more about your relationship with but, both but, Spike and Dennis. Primarily Spike at this like, point. I think. Finally. I think my relationship with Spike. I can best destroy because he is a wildly intelligent. Um, but the whole the whole like, you know public public play thing that we do um I'd call it like a uh, platonic gimp. Okay. <laughs> I didn't um, realize that was coming back in fashion. That might be a good title for an episode of something. Um, uh, but Lolita, you can you can fix Mike's cheek, right? Uh, well, we've already established that I'm not very good at the cover ups. You can change can it at him. least. Yeah, I will do my best. Maybe we'll turn it into one little bird or something. We cut outside to the parking lot uh, where Spike is listening to his tapes, and um, Dennis sees him. He's been Dennis has been sitting shirtless on the curb across the street from the parking lot, uh, fuming, uh, and Spike is listening to his tapes. Dead. And the theory of relativity says that space-time can be warped by the presence of mass. You see Dennis uh, just... Mass, <laughs> church... <laughs> Spike, ah, you, you know, know about relativity. did you know that Einstein did the theory of relativity in 1915? Is that it was, it was invented before by the Albert start Einstein of the World War II. 1915, before the start of Dennis, World War II. Dennis, you don't why, understand. Why'd you put on your invisible shirt? <laughs> I don't like it. I, yeah, listen, Spike. You gotta let me in the car. You, do, you gotta do it for me. Come the on. thing to know about Einstein is that he had a I wasn't a long told that I could do that. I was told to listen. To Come on. I'm gonna listen. Spike, what have I ever laid you wrong? I'm Dennis. Come on, buddy. <sighs> Said I'm Mrs. Back home. Einstein. I'm back he can home. warp my space time any space time. <laughs> Father Spike. can't hurt me anymore. Spike. Spike, you don't just. I, listen, listen. I just. I'm jealous of you, alright? I'm jealous Spike of the time that you're spending. Out. Oh, come on, man. Spike. Spike. Let me in. Said no. Stephen, uh, oh, no, maybe not. Said uh, Robert Oppenheimer, when that body, uh, hold on. Hold on, let me, can I see the, the script, Terrence? Okay. Said Robert Oppenheimer, uh, when... He put that body in motion. It stayed in motion. Is that a real quote? Fuck NPR. <laughs> and then my relationship with Dennis. Yes. Is he's just, uh, you know, my no good, dirty, rotten, pig stealing cousin. He's your cousin. Oh, he is your cousin. Yeah, there's relation. Okay. Oh, that's not the type of How are you cousins I was expecting by? to hear about. How are you cousins uh, by? So we, we, we're uh, cousins in the way that, like, uh my my mom's best friend growing oh, up one of who those. I always call my auntie. Uh Dennis is his daughter's fiance's uh third cousin, I believe twice Wow, so this is a really special connection that's been getting kinda testy lately, huh? 
Yeah, you know, it's a real, real close relation he and I have, you know. Mom's best friends, aunties, dead cousins, twice removed kid. Were you that uh, family that uh, opened up without realizing it two tattoo parlors right next to each other? Opened up without realizing it two tattoo parlors? Yeah, right next to each other in uh, uh, South Lindbrook? Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I read about that at the time. Yeah, it was yeah, like a three too. identical strangers kind of thing. It was weird that they used that metaphor because this was back in the 80s. But mm-hmm. It was like identical twins, but with buildings. Yeah. It was yes. crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you, was, just, you just never know what your you know, mom's best friend's fiance's third cousin twice removed kid's pool boy is going to do. I think if we uh, you know, lay out all of the templates, then we'll be able... Oh, Hold on, I'm getting a, a call. Hi, this is Anna's uh, tattoo parlor. How can I help you? You, you son of a bitch. Dennis. You. Did your mom let you on the phone again? Listen, you don't understand. You don't understand. First of all, Auntie Anna, you should know. Did you know? That, that Anastasia probably did die in the Bolshevik Revolution. I don't know if that was ever clear, made clear, but the movie lied. It's, she, she never escaped. It was they found her bones later on. It was a huge scam. Oh, I'm also, sorry, dear. I, I had the phone away from you. No, 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 no. Uh, hold on, my, hold what, on. what were you saying? Hold on. Sorry, look I was talking across, to a customer. Look across the street. Look across the street. Uh yeah, I see the uh the village voice and the pay phone and what is that? Pale, yeah, that's right. Dennis, that's right. Are you sitting across Catalpa from me? You know it. You know it, Auntie Anna. I'm, would, sitting, I'm sitting on Catalpa here. What would I, you be doing across the street? What are you sitting in front of? What, I'm what's sitting going? in front of your, 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 your worst nightmare. You My see, worst. Dennis pulls the <laughs> pulls a string and a tarp falls. And it's, what was it? Auntie Anna's. Pool boy's best friend's tattoo parlor. <laughs> what was the relationship exactly? I forget. Fuck it. Dennis's mom's tattoo <laughs> parlor. <laughs> oh my god. I cannot believe she would do this. This this is We're coming for you, bitch. <laughs> you dead. Jesus Christ, Dennis. Look, I'm gonna put Lolita on. I need to talk to your mother. No, what uh, you gonna do what? I'm going to put Lolita on the phone. Oh, your cousin. Okay, hold, hold on, okay. <laughs> <laughs> why, are you taking, why are you taking your shirt off? What are you doing? Oh, did you already have your shirt off? I don't no, know. I get, I get you sweaty, took your second all. shirt off. You don't understand. I get sweaty. It's, no, this is my invisible shirt, okay? It's my invisible mm-hmm. shirt. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving you the phone. Here you go, dear. I'm, I have to go yell at your auntie. Hey, hey, Lolita. Sorry, guys. I got... Oh, that's okay. Hey, who is this? Hey, hey, Lolita, it's Dennis. Hey, wh- what the fuck are you calling for? I uh, just, uh, yeah, it, I, we got the new tattoo, Paul. I just thought that I'd call you and then and, and let you know. Sounds like a pretty intense conversation. Hey, what are you getting? I'm getting uh, uh, Einstein's tongue, like, on the, <laughs> the side of my, you know, rear. as sort of like a fun thing, like he's, you know, looking. I'm getting Einstein's tongue on my tongue. Oh, Hey, maybe Look, we should... Dennis, I really don't have time for this. I'm tattooing Einstein licking this guy's ass right now. I mean, it's just that's a, that's that's cool. You do you do Einstein's ass licking tongue better than anybody. That's classic. <laughs> it's a classic. Yeah, everybody knows I could do original work wonderfully, but if you ask me to cover something up, it's probably just going to be a bird. Sweetheart, I, I'm looking in the mirror. Hey, don't fucking right... call me that, dear. I'm looking in the mirror. That is positioned so that I can see my ass. And it looks like you've turned Einstein around the wrong way. It just looks like he's licking the side of my ass exterior. That's not going to work. Can well, you, you, know, can you fix that? Well, you know, I figured that? that, like, you know, if he would, if, if this were really just an intimate moment between, like, you and Einstein, okay? There's no, you couldn't even tell it was Einstein because he would just be like whole face deep oh, in the ass. I could tell. But if you, if you think of it as like a performance, like if, they, if this were like a pornography or something, okay, he would do like a little three quarter thing, you know, yeah, like when you right. see cartoon characters and they're talking and they should be in profile, but they're really in three quarters. So you can see the whole faces. He would be like 
and then out the side of his mouth, like uh, 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 so you know, so you could see his face. Well, he's also eating it. Yeah, you don't have to explain that to me. I was fired from Hanna Barbera for drawing exactly that. You see Dennis outside, all phone in phone in one ear. He's furiously writing notes on a notepad. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, interesting. Sounds like an interesting relationship between the the three of you. Yeah, you know, you just never know what you're gonna get from your mother's best friends, fiance's third cousin, twice removed, kids, pool boys, great aunts, nephew. I guess not. I, Don't we all? I mean, here's one thing I know that you can get from him is a shit tattoo. Uh, so I'm glad we kicked. I him asked out. for the best tattoo parlor. Th- I'll, I'll take the blame. I accidentally sorted low to high instead of high to low. On I milk. I asked for the best tattoo parlor in all of the Limbrook. Yeah. Well, you There's did. Like you did. Five. Well, you don't did. worry. You I- got the best tattoo parlor in all of Limbrook. But the thing is, it's like an average thing. So like, Dennis's ass, and I then got the weak link. I'm. I'm what like about Dennis's good. ass? No, no, no. He is ass, and then I'm pretty good. And then Spike is is like a god amongst men. <laughs> so on average, we're one of the best in Lindbrook. I didn't realize you were all in the same parlor. I thought, I mean, I hired each of you on a contract basis. What a what a coincidence! Um, oh yeah, that's how those contracts work in the biz. Oh okay, yeah. so it's really the like illusion a of choice. Thing where like they recommend like the next person uh, in their parlor to to you like after you hire them kind of like a multi-level marketing kind like of a little deal chain thing. like a little chain like a little speaking chain of the thing. little chains can i take the clamps off now oh yeah go ahead okay. that was really yeah. just for me it was like a mental uh, well it was worth the 5.99 once they told me to, that i couldn't tattoo people's assholes anymore i needed to find somewhere else who to, told you, you know, this just, uh, you know they did just like generally people were like, was, hey, Lolita, did this hey, come- Kathy, stop tattooing people's assholes. We think it's a little weird. <laughs> did this come from the city government? Because we can take that back, right, Alex? Yeah. I want a dream catcher <laughs> right in the middle. <laughs> Alex, you already have a dream catcher right in the middle, but do you want someone to draw something on it? Guys, I'm actually looking through the files right here. We have specifically a department for... Uh, the Department Against Asshole Tattoos. We can just disband ooh, ooh, that wait, if wait, wait, you really Alex, want to. Alex, can you make me... Take away my other thing, because we're not going to do anything with it. Can you make me in charge of the Department of Asshole Tattoos? I mean, against asshole tattoos? I'll turn it into the Department of Asshole Tattoos? Yes. Yes! Okay, sign here. Sure. Sign, sign. That's fine. Okay, I'm going I'm to go downstairs. I'll be right back. I don't even write my name anymore. I just draw like a penis. <laughs> Knock, knock. <laughs> Hello. Uh, new boss. Hello, new oh, boss. Oh, hey there. How you doing? Hi, I'm your new boss. My name's Adam. I'm in charge of the Department Against Asshole Tattoos. Is that what it's called? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, come on in. I'm Lewis. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Hi, Lewis. I'm Paul. And Paul. Have, a, have an asshole. Thank you. Oh, You'll this is You'll notice this asshole's this- tattoo free. This is a pencil sharpener in the shape of a rectum. This is great. I love. Oh, this. we have a, we have fun here in the. You have a uh, lot of the, like ass based paraphernalia. Okay, yeah. such as. Well, we you got the, the the famous. This is the one that everybody loves to see. We love to see the uh, the the asshole the uh, uh, pencil sharpener. But over here yep. we got the asshole air fresheners. Over here we That's got. That's fun. The, That's yeah, really it's, fun. It's a, it's a good one. It's a good one, isn't it? It's a great one. I like that. We, we got the asshole Faces hole punchers. Out. Hole punch. Here's the that's asshole. Here's the stress ass. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, we got Derek. He's just an asshole. Oh, that's fine. Hey, what do you want? You want some cookies? That'd be Derek. Derek. Derek coming on strong. What are we going to do with Derek? How did you... You're shaped like assholes. You got the, that um, megaphone through the metal detector? <sighs> I guess it kind of looks like an asshole. It kind of <laughs> does, yeah. It only detects ass. No, it makes, it makes ass. me more of an asshole. Yeah. See, it, I just I talk in a real breathy line. Did not catch all of that, but it's great to meet all of you. <laughs> I'm um I'm gonna be in charge from now on. The mayor made me in charge. Okay. Oh, fantastic. I, Who it was used in to be charge my job. Before? I, I guess. Are oh, you? that would be me. Lewis? I guess I'm being demoted. You're being you're being um put in the same place. The organizational oh. hierarchy is changing around you. So oh, now okay. I am directly supervising your work. And I have the power to hire and fire people and okay. to change the mission statement of the office. Oh, fantastic. If you can't fire me, it's in the Constitution of the city. It is, it is, it is in there. Clause 15 says Derek has a job. And he could be an asshole. <laughs> that is true. 
Hmm, we're going to have to rush an amendment through. In the meantime, I think I kind of want to change the direction of this place. How do, How do you feel? mean? We're so far, we got uh, we got protesters. We got uh, cease and desist letters. Uh, do you want to make it a little more fun? Like, what, what, what are you thinking? I'm sorry. We, we have casual Fridays. We're- I'm new. <laughs> um, three questions. Sure. Protesters? Yes. Are they on our behalf? That is to say... Pronou- it's pronounced prostators. <laughs> Sorry, it's my dyslexia kicking in. Um, no, are I they mispronounced on... it. Uh, sorry. Oh, you're dyslexic too? Hey. Wait, were you in Mrs. Robertson's class in fourth oh. grade? Oh, how'd you know? Oh, hey, Adam. That's right, hey. I remember you. Yeah. Lewis, you were the exchange student from Manitoba. That's uh, that is me. Right, and why did you... You were witness protection? Well, I'm... <laughs> Well, witness emphasis on, <laughs> That's you know. right. on the nest. Yeah, I was I was chosen for this job from a very young age. Okay, class, we have a very special new member of our family here today. He is from Manitoba, Canada. Ooh, uh, and I think specifically from Winnipeg. He's a participant in uh, the witness. Sorry, witness protection program. So nobody tell their parents. That he's here. This is Lewis. Lewis, why don't you why don't you say hi to everybody? Hey everybody. Hello. Okay. I'm Lewis. I uh I, I was told not to tell anybody about the witness protection or people would come and hurt me. So I uh I hope Yes, uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, are you in in the back? I don't Hi, I, hi, hi. Yeah, My hi, daddy former. says that Canada's full of a bunch of commie bastards and that your prime minister hates America. Is that true? I don't know what a commie is. I can. I'm, I'm six. I. Uh, but uh, I. Well, sure. We, this is something you're gonna have to get used to here in America. Is we really start talking about civics young, so oh, okay. everyone has a really good idea of where they fall on the political spectrum. Great um, teacher. T- yes. Derek stole my megaphone. Okay, and how does that make you feel? <sighs> Derek, how does that make you? feel? <sighs> It makes me feel uncomfortable. I feel like I'm going to be dealing with this for the rest of my life. I have the megaphone. Oh, God, he hit puberty. Uh, That's probably not going to become a problem. That's probably going to be fine. America's weird. Question two. Actually, question one was not answered. Prostators. Are they on... Are, are they advocating on our behalf? Or yeah, yeah. No, we we send a whole big group, specifically Derek with the megaphone and like three people that are oh, that makes sense now. Yeah. That hang out uh, in the office. We send them to places that we find doing the asshole uh, modifications, and we just decided to we just we just really make it a big fuss for him. It's a great time. Oh, we I do see. it on so a Friday. Fun way to oh, close out the week. Casual. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, news to me. I thought we were just anti-tattooing. We're against all asshole modifications? That's correct. Okay. Can you give me some? So obviously we've got bigger, smaller. Yeah. And uh, depth. Depth. And, uh, yeah, that, that, yeah. That'd, be, that'd, that'd qualify. Anything that changes it, really, that, that's, that's where we go. What Rings. is the most... Sorry? Rings. Rings, or yeah. piercings. Yep. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought you meant like rings around a tree trunk. Well, though, some, sometimes something. they like to get it pierced shut. And, um, uh, we're really opening the sector. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yep, yes. That's one that uh, Derek's okay. uh, a little bit more concerned about than the rest of us. But yeah, there was one guy that was really interested in that a very long time ago, and it really pissed Derek off. And what was the um, reasoning there? What was his argument for permanently opening? He thought it would make it easier to pull up. Okay. Well, granted, sure, but that's it? It turned him into a weird little duck then. You know how ducks don't have sphincters, so the shit just falls out of their assholes. They don't even know what's coming. I actually did hear that from my tattoo artist, Dennis. Um, That's my brother. Really? Oh, wow. Oh, so you must have grown up in that tattoo parlor. that he, We don't have to talk about that now. Um, question two. Oh, yeah, we're uh, still doing this. That's right. Did you say like flyers and pamphleting? Was that oh cease and desist, right? Cease and desist letters, yeah. So we we make it clear with the protesters and the prostators that uh, they, they, what they're doing is illegal. But if they refuse, we just we just send them. We got our lawyer on the on the line, and we uh, we send it to them. We send them a letter, letting them know. I knew I forgot to do something today. Uh, oh, you forgot the cease and desist. Yeah. Uh, oh man, 
It's going to um, be a whole other week. This is the, this is a pretty good downward dog. It's going to be a little, if you can get the hips lower. Um, okay. And getting, I'm, I'm just going to get the winch out and hopefully we'll be able to dilate it enough that we'll be able to make the modifications. So do you have any questions before I get started? No, I'm just so excited. Okay. I thought they were- I've been trying to get this done for ever okay good good yeah no i'm excited for you this is my first time doing it i've done other stuff don't worry i'm not like inexperienced or anything this is just a new procedure so oh, just crank exciting. that baby wide yep. open <laughs> will do <laughs> okay good oh, we're making we're this is good usually if they it's 12 45 if they haven't served us by now then they're not going to serve us usually until the end of the week with the season to sit oh hold on someone's knocking um <laughs> go away please Okay, crank, 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 It's too late. The dam is open. I've got to get it as wide as the... Thank you for bringing your own, like, school gym parachute for size reference. I've got to get it that wide. Just keep going. going. Go away. The portal. Oh, my God. I need something to bite. He said deceased. Shut the fuck up. We're doing this. I can't hear you. I'm being enveloped. It's like one of those anechoic chambers where you can hear your heart beating. This is incredible. Oh, no. I'm getting sucked inside. Put that. Put that. Question uh, three. We lost another one today, boys. Oh, we're still going for question three. Okay, all right. Do you mind if we just change everything and do the opposite of what we've been doing and be pro? Yeah, sure. Okay, on board. Oh. That's huh. one. One. I four. never really thought about it, like encouraging the the tattoos instead of discouraging them. Oh yes, encouraging very heavily. Oh, Let's yeah, just sure. say the mayor has a vested interest in making sure. That the ass tattooers of Limbrook are satisfied. No. Really? Derek. Derek, you're against? No. Last time we let this happen, my partner, he got sucked into somebody's asshole that was the size of a middle school parachute. He fell right you in. You guys are operating on a partner <laughs> system. No, no. Like, no, I mean, my partner. Like my, oh, my your romantic partner. partner. Oh. Yeah, no, not like a police thing or anything. I know you're serious there. because you've turned your megaphone off and are just whispering very low. Very close to us yeah. now. We're all leaning yeah. in. I need to just get right in, right in here to where you can feel my breath yes. in your ear. Okay, this I is probably doing you, something for someone who's listening. The, the man I loved fell into somebody's asshole because nobody... <laughs> I just started thinking he about... He was sucked in. I need to be transparent with you guys. We, I have a wireless mic on. We're recording. You know the podcast that we do from here. Everybody loves Everybody Loves Raymond. So I was just thinking about maybe somebody is... If we don't edit this out, which I hope we will, it, thinking about somebody listening to this and getting like ASMR tingles to you, Derek, describing somebody getting sucked into somebody else's asshole. This isn't a fucking joke, you guys. The man, I love fell into somebody's asshole and I haven't seen him in two years. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Derek. I'm very sorry here. I'm, I'm sorry. I know your 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 attachment to your to your partner there. I, I didn't consider how this was uh, this was bad. Could we possibly like you know just change the uh, the the law slightly so that you know we discourage the parachuting, <laughs> but we encourage. All yes, we can. We can include a parachuting clause. Um, yeah, like an anti-parachuting clause. I think. Yes, I think that's, and to that's be clear, the main. hold up, parachuting. Not parachuting. <laughs> yeah, it's like the parachute. We need to name it after him. Oh. The Chet anti-parachuting law. It'll be his legacy. The anti-Chet parachuting law? No, no. The, parachute? the no, Chet anti-parachuting. It's not anti-Chet. It's for Chet. <laughs> for the Chets by the person who loved Chet. Okay, do you want to be present at the signing? I would love to. Okay. I think we, are, we have a quorum then. What we're going uh, to do is we're going to change the law to where you can get an asshole tattoo, but you cannot, under no circumstances, go parachuting. So what was up with that toaster? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I didn't, like, listen, I, I think Schneider brought up a very good point. This is a weird gift to give to, like, friends and stuff. But um, it's just a it's just a weird gift, period. Mm -hmm. It's not a good gift. Yeah. It's, you know, if you did, like, you know, an engraving on a decorative plate 
or something. Something that's like not used. Something you hang up. Yeah. Not like a, a toaster. Toaster? Would you, do you think it's one of those where it's like you put in the the uh the bread, you pop it and like it toasts no. in the autograph, you know? No way. No, that no was way. engraved it's on the outside. Yeah. Honest to God, I I thought when watching the episode because of just how dumb I thought the gift was that when Deborah's parents were like really just like, Oh my gosh, this, I love this. Da, 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 da. I thought the thread of the episode was going to be that Deborah like tipped them off that Ray was feeling self-conscious about the gift and told them to like, sell it and they they like hammed it up too much and he was going to catch them genuinely like, i couldn't believe that anybody was that excited about a toaster genuinely i think that would have been a better uh, a better a better version of this that could have happened yeah and he may just not have realized hey guys oh god that was a successful meeting down there let me just oh, get good. back into my squat um you know i was thinking on my way back up here is like i really did think you know remember the scene where um we were in Lo- Warren and Lois's house, and they were receiving the toaster. I really did oh, yeah, think we were just set, talking about way. that, actually. Oh, do you also feel like they were... Did you suspect at first that they were faking it? Like, Lois being like, 100%. oh, oh my God, it's so retro chic. And and Warren being like, look at that chrome. Like, it did seem yeah, very put fake. it on display. They didn't even put it in the kitchen. They set it on the banister. I kind of buy it, because they're, they're like ritzy art people. That's true. So they would did they, they they would get excited about a toaster if they like the uh how it you know how it's structured the composition of that's it. how I thought it was gonna go though until Robert showed up and he also like loved it which by the way can we talk about that look who just shows up because they're passing by on Christmas Day to your brother's in-law's house this that just yeah. that just seemed a to little see weird your family. Too. And to bring your, um, you know, we don't know what their relationship is. It seems pretty casual um, mm-hmm. yeah, to bring his, his Leanne. Um, oh, but yeah. <laughs> he's already a degree removed because he's Deborah's brother-in-law. Yeah. Yeah. And then and Leanne now showed is, up with his date. Yeah. Um, their decorations in their house, their, like, aesthetic seemed very, um, like, late 90s specific like this is hip furniture. It reminded me of um, you remember in Friends when Joey moves out of his apartment with Chandler and gets like with the ceramic dog and everything. Like I've I've never seen. Okay, Friends. well that he he moves into a place that looks kind of like this. Yeah, I know I, I know what yeah. you're talking about. So I'm not a fan, honestly. I would rather live. Well, no, it's, it's not true. I was gonna say I'd rather live in Ray and Deborah's house, but Ray and Deborah's house sucks. Does it? I'd rather live in Robert's apartment. Robert's got a well, nice Ray and Deborah's house is just like a suburban home. Exactly. Yeah, but it's across the street from Marie. Yeah, that drives it down. Okay, I didn't think we were like when he said I'd rather live in Ray and Deborah's house. Like that included being in universe. <laughs> yeah. No, it does. I don't think I would get along with Frank. I don't think we would gel well. Oh, so because you mentioned Frank. Uh, I also do need to comment that in this episode, similar to how I pointed out that I felt it was the epitome of Ray to the point of parody, Mm -hmm. Frank similarly was just like so much of a like quasi abusive dickhead. Oh, yeah. And there have been episodes with a lot of Frank where. He gets off his one liners. He's, you know, kind of an ass, but like it's it's fun, whatever. Like this one, I'm just like, Frank, you're a piece of shit. So like yeah. n- nobody came across as likable. I don't know. To the point of flanderization. Leanne. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't Robert like did. Two and a half. I don't think Robert did too bad this episode. He was fine. I had one thing with Robert that I was not a fan of, but just to stay on Frank for a second. Um, Frank did seem to start in a weird place in this episode because we establish um, on Christmas, over, yeah. on Christmas, um, Marie and Frank had, I the comment, uh, the uh, subtitle said Teslas, but it sounded like Testas to me. They had some friends over and they sang songs, drank amaretto. Your father was wonderful, she tells Ray. Um, and Frank danced with a trash can. And then when we go Which over. Which is a good setup. Yes. And then we go over to. I danced to, with, my, with your mother. Yeah. To Frank uh, hung over at the kitchen table. He's like, I danced with your mother last night. Ray says, uh, I thought it was a trash can. He says, I uh, 
traded up to the trash can or something like that. I honestly, which yes, I honestly is, think it would have been better if it just if he just said I danced with your mother and that's yeah. it. That's what I thought it was going for as well. Um, but it th- this way is I mean both ways are very mean. But I think you're right, Schneider, that it is a uh, particularly cruel Frank episode. Yeah, especially like once they were in the Bloomingdale's. True. Uh, how he was just like telling Marie to shut up. Lock it up, Marie. Just like be quiet, lock it up. Yeah, yeah like very like straight out of a you know, nineteen fifties movie. Like yeah. old Sean Connery flick kind of Yeah. Or later super days casual um, misogyny. Later days real life Sean Connery. Genuinely yeah. Like a, yeah. Actually, whole life, Sean Connery. <laughs> I was going to say it's genuinely pretty generous to give Frank the the uh, the Sean Connery uh, 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 moniker, moniker there, but you know, I. Uh... <laughs> well, in the terms, not in the terms of acting ability, yeah, in the yeah. terms of how he appears to be treating women. You know what I, no, I, I would like now. to get a woman's perspective on how Frank was treating women. Uh, Lolita, I know you're working over there. You've got your Palm Pilot out, but. Do you have any thoughts on how Frank uh, treated Marie in this episode? He reminds me of my Uncle Bobby, and that guy's an asshole. Really? Yeah, it's just, you know, like Joseph said, there's been some other episodes where, like, Frank was, you know, he was, he was like, playful. He was, like, you know, just kind of teasing, you know, like the episode uh, where his dick doesn't work. I don't think and we've, then, got, you we've know, not gotten gets, to that one yet. Oh, okay, I don't remember what season that is, but, like, his dick stops working. And, and like, he gets the... Uh, the, the, the little blue pills. Mm-hmm. And then like at the end of the episode, you know, Marie and Frank are both trying to talk to their kids. About, I'm sorry. I know <laughs> this isn't, you know, season three, episode 12, but it's just a better example of like how Frank can be written, you know? So you, they keep trying to talk to, you know, Raymond and Robbie about like their sex life and stuff. And they're just like, ew, I don't want to hear you. You know, <laughs> you know, my parents, you guys don't have sex. You only had sex twice and it's when you conceived us. I do remember uh, that line. But like at the end of the episode, they reconcile and they're just like, yeah, we bone and you're going to like, you just got to get used to that. But like Marie goes and hugs Frank and she goes like, oh, are those the pills? Are you happy to see me? And then Frank pulls the pills out of his pocket and goes, those are the pills. <laughs> so like, that's funny. He's teasing her, but like, you know, he's, it, it's from a place of love. This episode, it felt very unloving. I know now where I recognize you from. You did those local commercials for Cialis, right? Yeah. Where you held up me. the bottle and you looked at the camera and winked and said, those are the pills. Yep. <laughs> Helped me work my way through tattoo school. Really? Um, it it was very it did seem heavily inspired by the Orbit gum commercials from the early two thousand tens. We actually received a cease and desist letter from that lady. Right. We cut back to that advertising office. Uh, guys, get in here. Um whoa, whoa, what's Did up? we yeah. film a commercial where we were quote parachuting assholes? I don't remember that. Uh we were hang gliding nipples. Is that something? Oh uh, no, that was that was October seventy two. Yeah, Costa Rica oh, yeah. was very happy with that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, no asshole, no parachuting asses. Okay. Oh, this who was the who was the previous tenant of this building? Because I think we got some of their mail here. Let's talk about if if you don't mind the scene of Marie and Frank in Bloomingdale's. I mean, him being an asshole. Sorry, him being a dick. Besides, it uh, you know to the side. I did like his sort of acting turn peter boyle's acting in this episode going from lock it up marie to hello and have a merry and Mm. a merry christmas to you may our lord and savior bestow many blessings upon you and your loved ones i'm jewish that's a good line do you want me to tell you about the do you did you do a deep dive on the blooming tales lady um okay so we've got the cashier returns lady she is played by patricia bethune i am assuming is how that's pronounced but she's credited in this as pb hutton she's a big deal she's a daytime emmy winner for her role as quote evil nurse mary pat on general hospital uh and she was also on mad men and true blood uh she's guest starred on just about every sitcom and procedural you can think of from 1995 to present she's still working today um Interesting about her credit, she was uh, credited as P.B. Hutton up until an episode of Gilmore Girls in 2003 when she started going by um, Patricia Bethune 
uh, her first credit under that name was a TV movie called Species 3. I don't know what happens in one, two, possibly four. That's Patricia Bethune. All right. Well, so, okay. So, first of all, Patricia did a very good job. I will say I liked um, the negotiation tactics were very, very funny. I also just genuinely thought, okay, I want to back up a minute because I know yes. we got to get to the other guy that um, was in an argument with Frank. I know we got to get to him. Hamilton. But before we get to him, what is the, in your guys' mind, the polite, the return etiquette on Christmas gifts? Oh, that's a very topical question, Mike. You yeah. can't prepare. Uh, I say if they include a gift receipt, you have the green light. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, don't. Okay. What if Just I hate it? Keep it. Just put it in a closet. Yeah. Can or I throw it, it away? You can re-gift it. Okay, so here's the thing. Mm. Here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. Christmas is the 25th. You have to hold on to non... I, 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 agree, I agree with Schneider over here. You got to hold on to non-gift receipt items until the new year, right? Gift receipt, yeah. your, fair, your fair game. You got to hold on to at least the new year. But if I have a gift I hate and February or March rolls around, is it still impolite for me to toss that thing? toss or like give it to someone else or like sell it on any Craigslist? of the above oh, d- well, does they it ever matter? know is i i the important it question. depends on the item did somebody give you a yeah. lexus with a big red bow on it because that'd be pretty conspicuous if you stopped driving it in March. lexus is a terrible car i don't know i don't think i've ever gotten a christmas gift that was so bad that i was like i need to be rid of this i have occasionally gotten christmas gifts that i'd be like oh that's okay and then years later, I'm clearing out my closet, and I'm like, oh, there's that robe that I got that one time. Well, you guys aren't going to believe this, but one year, my ex-fiance, Bobby, oh, want to hear no about relation that. to my uncle Bobby, he got me hear that, Alex? She's an singing. engraved toaster. What? Mm-hmm. Just like in this episode? Yeah. Yeah, just like season three, episode 12 of Everybody Loves Raymond, the toaster. The toaster. He got me an engraved toaster. What was on it? And you know, it felt weird. It felt weird. I didn't return it, but I did figure, you know, it says Christmas on it because it said, you know, Merry Christmas to our happily ever after. (laughs) Didn't work out. (laughs) But after, you know, maybe a week or two when we took the tree down, I put the toaster up in the cabinet and I brought back down the regular toaster. And then Bobby was like, hey, where's the the new toaster I got? I was like, well, it says Christmas on it. So I figured it's a Christmas thing. And he was just like, why would I spend so much money getting something great if people are only going to see it one month out of the year? And I was just like, we're the only people that live here. What do you mean? I know it exists. You know it exists. And he was just like, well, what if we have guests over? I'm like, well, then they they can make toast in this toaster. It's not Christmas time. I'm not going to put the Christmas toaster out. And it was a huge fight. And that's actually why we broke up. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. That's intense. Yeah. So you know what? I think Frank and Marie made the right call here. I, Get rid of it immediately. I, uh, I, th- I don't know about no, that. No, 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 no. The call after that call of going back and Go trying back to. Oh, I see, I see. Getting I see. rid of it immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think a good rule of thumb is if it's from your son or your mother and it seems to be kind of just like a thing, like at least open it. Open it. For because sure. sometimes. But then like, you can't return it. Not necessarily. Okay, but unless you have the gift receipt, I don't think you should be returning it. Yeah, all. that's true. Well, I mean, we know that in the episode, Marie and Frank lie to Bloomingdale's and say that they yeah. got it there. I, I love how uh, uh, Ms. Bethune, Patricia, you said? Patricia. Patricia Bethune says, so why are we lying today? Yeah, that was a great line. <laughs> um, and then yeah. Marie uh, saying they'd like a toaster and her saying you can pick out a toaster over there. Marie being like, thank you. Shalom. And then running yeah. over to the I will say that, like, that moment really juxtaposed in a funny but also, like, informative way the differences between Marie's character and Frank's character. Because Frank was being very performative with the, like, may our Lord and Savior bestow his blessings upon you. I'm Jewish. Well, then all of these people must be a pain in your ass, right? It felt very, like, him trying. Yeah. And then... <laughs> Like, Marie, it didn't feel... She's still trying. Like, you know, she was just like, oh, like, what 
what's the Jewish thing yeah. to say? But it didn't <laughs> feel like a performance. It felt like a just trying to be well nice. in tending but ignorant person. Well-intentioned is definitely the phrase to describe it because Frank, you know, not authentic with anyone uh, if he can avoid yeah. it. And Marie just being like, okay, I'm trying to be polite here so I can get what I want. So I'm yeah. going to do what but I also, think is I nice. was wondering the whole time in Bloomingdale's, like, w- I-, I know why Frank didn't because he wanted both the coffee maker and the toaster. Yes. But... Marie made up the whole shtick about how, like, oh, we want something maybe we could use, like a toaster. Why couldn't you just be like, hey, we exchanged something that we didn't know was personalized, and we kind of want it back? Well, yeah. here's what? the thing, right? She's she's feeling shame about it. Oh, yeah, that's and she true. She would give away a personalized gift. That's kind of why the, the other grandma character came in and kind of yeah. put her in her place real quick. Didn't think about um, that. So that's what I would guess. It, the, the, the Barones are not a family of open and healthy communication in any sense. You don't say. Speaking that's of why the show is so fun. The other grandma. <laughs> the the other grandma came in and was like, oh, can we change the names to, what was it? It was June, Clyde? Well, no, June. Uh, it is June, Harvey, Bobby, and then she's cut off by Marie. Uh, I will say, three terrible names. <laughs> You just lost all viewers named June, Clyde, and Bobby. Sorry about that. And the, the Harveys, too. Oh, I can't forget about the, the Harveys. Sorry about um, the Harveys. If, you you're know, having a, if you're having a kid, if you're having a kid, you don't name him Harvey. Harvey sounds like an old man name. I can't give Harvey a milk bottle. That's That just also, sounds, um, that just sounds Mike, wrong. I, I, you can indeed give Harvey a milk <laughs> bottle. That's how Harvey Milk got his name. All right, sorry. Also, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Also, really great uh, implied storytelling with the grandma coming in and saying like, oh, he got it printed for me, but they just got the names yeah. wrong. Like this grandma clearly just opened the toaster, saw it had names on it. It was like, you got it engraved? And the, the son was like, yeah, I did. <laughs> but also like, so either he wasn't there, but I do like your headcanon of the idea that he was because him taking like, credit. Yeah, yeah. He would have to be like, oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> they must have gotten the names wrong. Ah, man, I should have checked it before I wrapped it. He's like a parallel, yeah. like, uh, Protestant version of Raymond, you know? Equally craven <laughs> and self-serving. But- I mean, but that guy didn't get a special toaster. He just bought a toaster from Bloomingdale's for his mom. Which That's I true. think is yeah. a worse gift. I think it's a better one. Why? <laughs> because like it has utility it's just like hey here you know you need a toaster great now i have a toaster i don't know appliances are expensive thank you so much with the engraving now everybody's gonna be fucking asking just like why do you have a christmas toaster out in july <laughs> it's a conversation starter i don't want to have a conversation about the toaster well, maybe you gotta make more friends every time a new person is in your kitchen you have to explain who michael jeffrey ali deborah and ray are yes i want an excuse to brag about my grandkids what are you talking about Speaking of, when Marie is uh, frantically trying to prove that the toaster belongs to her and she takes out her wallet to show pictures of Ray. Here's Ray, Michael, Jeffrey, and Allie. I don't have a picture of Deborah. Um, and puts it's great. Away. Very Such a funny, funny moment. Such yeah. a funny moment. But also, the pictures do not prove their name. No, True. absolutely not. She'd need their identification <laughs> documents. But, you know, maybe it would have been easier for them to deal with because there was only five names. When Bobby got me that toaster, he put all 16 of his kids from his first two marriages. That's Eight and too eight, many kids. or 10 and 6, or 12 and 4, or... 15 and 1. Holy oh, shit. Oh, that poor first woman. Did he come from, like, a very religious background, or... No, it was actually octuplets followed by septuplets. Wow. Completely unplanned. That makes sense. Yeah, Bobby wanted to reduce, but she was really Catholic. What does reduce mean? The number of children? <laughs> like, send them back? <laughs> Return to sender. Back up? No, a reduction. So, like, you know, if you get pregnant with triplets, but you only want twins, you just... I think you need to get parachute to send them back up. Yeah, you roll the you roll the wheel of, you know... Well, that, that game show wolf. was popular for a little bit. What, the... <laughs> Oh yeah, let's reduce your pregnancy. Yeah, well, redu- it was on the game show now. Uh, adjust, adjust, because you could go either direction. They could add or subtract. Mm. Oh, oh yeah. And if you got the um, bankrupt, then it, it, CPS would come and take your kid, take them all away. 
I'm sorry. There are no E's. Your children are mine. I don't know why Vanna did that. I think, <laughs> I think that was a bad Vanna career career was, move what? for her. That's it. That was that was that was a rough moment. She wanted that. her own show. I just don't think this was the one. She just stayed on wheel. Well, yeah. Sometimes when stuff comes in and you're just looking for money, like when I was working through tattoo school, and you know there were some commercials that I just thought this is absolutely bad shade. Saying I do not want to put my stamp of approval on this product, but at the end of the day, I needed to pay my tuition, so okay, I'm going to go ahead and read your ad copy for... We cut to the recording studio at the ad agency that we visited earlier. Um, okay, Lolita, uh, the great stage name, This by is the a way. work set, and just call me Kathy. Oh, Kathy, of course. Um, Kathy, uh, really emphasize on this one the, the sensation of um, <laughs> prolapse so that the client knows... Uh, you know, so that the client and the customers know, like, this can of peanut brittle that's actually full of snakes that come out joke style, its aim is true. It will go exactly where it is advertised to go. So you see what I'm, I, I have it right here. So, uh, Darnell, if you'll come over here yeah. and just squat and, mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, yeah, you got it right there, right there. This is what hey. we showed the focus groups, by the way, Lolita. This is this is not nothing. No, sorry, Kathy. Kathy. This is again, Kathy. Kathy. We are sorry, right. Kathy. So you're just gonna read. Also, can I just ask yeah. if the prank peanut butter can where the snakes prolapse your asshole are FDA approved? Pending. <laughs> you know, sorry. you know what, you know what FDA stands for, right, Kathy? You know what FDA stands for? I don't want you to know. dumbasses. That's what it stands for. Nobody needs the FDA. I thought it was fucking dead ass. That's <laughs> the product. That's the product. That's, that's what we call this other thing. Okay, so he's going to reach down and, like, you know, quarter, uh, football center style and pull the uh, peanut brittle open. And as he does that, you're going to say the line, all right? Okay. Are you ready? And really yep. telegraph... Here you we know, go. really communicate the sensation of prolapse. We trust it. We're trusting you here, Kathy. This is a multi-million dollar product, all right? We Let's only, make it happen. We are almost out of space on the hard drive, so we only have space for this one take. So you need to okay. get it. Okay, I am. Uh, you have stressed that all this day. Is the I don't only know why you way. didn't just get a launch a drive. If we don't get it, we can't afford it. it. We can't afford it. We can't afford your scholarship that we promised you to tattoo school four years full ride. Yeah. Okay. This is pretty just make or break, Kathy. Tell me when we're live. We're live in okay. five, four, three, two, one, go. Pranks, prolapse, and everything in between, <laughs> it'll give you the woo. <laughs> that's that's it. good. That's, that's perfect. That's the one. That's pretty good. What? We weren't, we weren't recording? Okay. Shit. I'm sorry. Well, I need to wait for my asshole to go back. <laughs> no, I mean, we've all had to struggle, you know? I remember there was a time when we were doing this show out of a um, out of a Winnebago that we were driving around town. You know what? Honest to God, I don't even remember why I started telling this story. I just really get into the wreck and tool of it all. Well, I think it might have had something to do with the return at Bloomingdale's, and even if it didn't, I mean, let's talk about that, like, scene where... Oh, hold on. I'm getting a, uh, I'm getting a page. Uh, oh God! Oh wow! Okay, wow. Uh, Schneider, you know about uh, the cheating controversy in chess with the uh, the vibration? Of course. Yeah, I do. we we've got that system going on in my department. So I'm gonna have to oh, okay. go run down. I'm getting paged, so I'm gonna have to go run down there. Um, do you guys mind taking this? Actually, if you could all go together just for security, I do have this Ramazon return that I want to send back. Would you mind dropping it in the IPS box outside? Uh, sure. Yeah. No problem. Uh, okay. Yeah. Sure. I don't uh, know why. Yeah, 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 and like why not? four but points of contact. Un if unsafe place. Four points of contact just for security. Oh, sa for safety for the return slip, not for us. Yeah, but it's a package. Do we all have to be making contact with it at the same time as we go down? That, that would well, be the safest. Well, we got safest. four people, so yeah, heard yeah, okay, four points of contact. I got, I got point yeah. left. Here, I'll thrust, and then oh. you guys thrust as well, and we'll we'll do, we'll we'll. I was just going to grab out. the southwest corner of the paper with my hand. I'll, I'll take northeast. Okay, I'll take the center. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> All right. Alex, do you understand how cardinal numbers work? Yeah, they're red and they fly. <laughs> 
See, I can't even call you dumb because I said cardinal numbers when I meant cardinal okay, direction. Okay, there we go. That's all right. They're, they've turned the vibration up very high, so I need to go right now. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> We cut to outside in the parking lot. And on his deathbed, Einstein said, Honestly, I just wish I could have learned to suck myself off. He didn't say it like that. He didn't say that. That was that was Mick Jagger. That wasn't Einstein. These guys don't know nothing. These guys suck. This has been E equals M C O C K. The Spike. only erotic audio biography <laughs> of Albert Einstein. Spike, I'm, you got let me in. I'm Patrick Stewart. Telling you, <laughs> as always, when it comes to listening to the erotic adventures of Albert Einstein, make it so horny, that is. Spike. Spike, it's over. The terrible Dude. history is over. Can you let me in now? Who are you? I'm your... It's me, it's Dennis. You gotta let me in, man. Why... I was not told to let anyone in. Please. Okay. Uh, please. All right. Spike. Spike, listen, you gotta let me up here. You gotta get me back up there. As Dennis gets into Spike's Toyota Corolla, all of the windows immediately fog up from his prodigious sweat. Just, you gotta get me dead. back up there. The lead, is, the, lead is, the lead is the one I want. I just got... You can't... You can't I'm sorry. I blew it with it. I blew it. I just... I, w- I want to impress you, you know. I just I I gotta and you you already impress you. You gotta teach me your shit, man. Well, she likes birds. Does she? So here, I'll press the ejection seat. Oh wait, you no, go, no, no, no. You go show her. We cut to back in the recording studio as everybody is finding out where on the uh, Ramazon return slip they're going to be holding, and in the background, nobody notices. You just see Dennis up and down. And uh, yeah, and we the camera f- zooms, cool camera trick goes through the window that Schneider just described. Follow meets up with Dennis midair, real Mission Impossible stuff. Dennis is flying through the air. He is rapidly ascending, low Earth orbit. Let's say where that Red Bull guy jumped from, and realizes he doesn't have a parachute. Then he notices a button on the side of the ejector seat that just says one thing: parachute. And we cut back down to the ground where Adam is in the um, office, the asshole office. We're about to sign the the paper, and you know what, guys? I'm actually just going to... Let me just change one one thing here. Crossing out no parachuting? Right now, some parachuting. Whoa. I just... I'm sorry. I'm not... Disturbance. Somewhere. Somebody's asshole has just been parachuted. I know it for a fact. You could feel it? I can well, feel it. That's scary. Yes, he can feel it, but he can also hear it. Sonic boom from Dennis as he expands, winches out full dilation, um, and s- starts descending, but it, he's going so fast in his uh, re entry that. Huh, re entry. Um, that he uh, is is going at terminal velocity still. Everyone runs outside of the town hall um, as our hosts are carrying the Ramazon package out crab walk towards the IPS box. Derek runs outside and looks directly up at Dennis descending. Uh, uh. Derek! Wait. You got. You didn't get sucked inside Dennis's asshole. You it's just a wormhole. Yeah, it's a wormhole. They all lead to the same place. Oh, they all. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm with you. Derek, I'm almost out. It's been so long. I've lived a million years in here. Please. No. No, the parachute asshole. It's gonna. It's gonna land on those four people who are crab walking around Amazon return slip over the line of the strap box. Alex, you got the center, right? You got you got the center. Be careful. One step at a time. Let's oh. start. We can't. We oh, can't sorry, chop it. It's not how cardinal directions work. We can't chop it. Come on. We can't. We can't. We got it. Jet <laughs> falls through the sky. He does like a uh, skydiving move where he can go faster, down faster, and escapes the gravitational pull of uh, <laughs> Dennis's 
asshole and uh, <laughs> lands face first in the center of the Ramazon package, which luckily contained one of those peanut brittle things that has the snakes inside. Counterpunch the velocity of the snakes escaping from the package. Gently lifts him into the air where he comes to a soft landing, uh, but a moment uh, to spare. Oh my God, Derek, you look so beautiful. <laughs> you always know the right thing to say. Let's go. I got some new stuff I want to try with you. Guys, did did that guy just fall out of Dennis's asshole? I think hey, so. Guys, hey, hey, uh... Dennis is still falling. No, no, look, look, guys. No, the 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 back of his asshole got caught on the flat. Oh, thank God. Ew. Oh, this is really uncomfortable. Actually, oh yeah, this everyone's is... coming outside of McDonald's and pointing at him. Oh man, they shouldn't have. They put too many. Wow. I've always said. You guys ever seen those those flags where it's like the fish and the mouth's open and the wind blows oh, yeah. in it? That's kind of. I'm what looking I'm at one right oh, yeah, now. I kind of see it. I, uh, hey, Spike, how'd this happen? He wanted to bird you. He wanted to be a bird. Aw. So I told That's him really how to nice. be. I told him about the bird. The the launch. <laughs> That's so sweet. I, oh, my God. Hey, Mike, Alex. You I, know, uh, let's go Lolita, over here. I, uh, Schneider, get over oh, okay. here. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest. Ever since my mom opened up rival tattoo parlor, I just... I've always been trying to impress you with everything, and I just, I mean, hey, listen, I, uh... Shut up, Dennis. We're doing a huddle over here. Oh, I'm here. sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. We're just saying, I can speak for myself. Married wasn't going to happen anyway. I'm not going to pursue you romantically. Alex, thoughts? Nope. Nope. Mike, out? I, I, I'm honestly just, I'm intimidated by his, by his prolapse, and I just, I can't, yeah. Can't compete? I, I can't compete with that. Schneider, are you out? Not going to pursue Lolita romantically? No, no, no. Okay. It's, Lolita, you're the most fascinating. I feel fascinating. we're too similar. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys have been in lockstep every single sentence that you guys have said. At the, I don't think you guys have disagreed with each other once. Truly, if anyone, if anyone had a chance, it was you, Schneider. But yeah. Lolita, you've been the most fascinating woman we've ever had on the podcast. No offense to the other women who've been on the podcast. But... <laughs> But you just you just have such a feminine energy around about you we, that just works. Lolita, you know? you're welcome back on the pod anytime. Schneider, not so much, but Lolita, Schneider, we'll, any any we'll time. Be in touch. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to agree with that. That's that's the right call, yeah. Mike. Okay, guys, we're gonna we're gonna go over here. Take your time. We will be watching, but not like you know invasively. We we just want to clap. No, it's fine, guys. Okay. I've just I've never had anybody ever just tell me so straight up just follow your heart so you know what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna leave dennis on that flagpole maybe i'm gonna like throw a shoe at him or something but i'm gonna get in that car with spike and we're gonna go straight to vegas and get hitched do you hear that spike wow this is a bad uh, situation for dennis he, he I, fully I, uh, parachuted himself and he's he didn't even get the girl I'm still optimistic. <laughs> I'm still. I can't wait for them to get out of that. You huddle. shouldn't be. I can't wait for them to get out You're of that. You're my huddle. mother's best friends, third cousins, twice removed kids, pool boys, fiancés, great aunts, nephews, friend. I feel like our relationship has changed a few times there, but you know what? I, We're yeah, just too close. Yeah, this is gonna. This is gonna go good for me. Things are looking good for old Dennis. Grimace uh, at the base of the McDonald's flag starts running up. Uh, the the whatever whatever that's called the rope halyards. Hall thank you. <laughs> Grimace starts running up the halyards of the flagpole, and Dennis um, uh, he billows. He just full billows like a uh, a, a guy from the car dealership. Like the flag in the French Revolution. That's what I'm oh, like. shut that's a lot up, more Dennis. Romantic than what I was. Oh, what are you gonna say? The the wacky flailing inflatable tube. Man. Oh yeah, but see, that's not as historically appropriate for my character. So I'm gonna go with the French Revolution thing. I didn't realize they had those in <laughs> the call. French Revolution that you could sub that in. <laughs> shut up, Dennis. <laughs> Fuck off. Hey, what are you? What are you? Hey, wait, did, well, Lena, where are you going? Well, Lena. Oh. He's gone. Driving that Corolla to Vegas. We just see the the car drive off into the sunset. There's cans of the um, ass blaster peanut brittle things behind, like tied up, like uh, just, just married. Drive. 
Yeah, yeah, going off. Going off and just prolapsing the assholes of random Lindbrook citizens. It's doing a real, like, just, uh, hydraulics ooh, ooh. thing, so it's it's bumping down the street. Lowrider starts playing by war. Um, As just people are just prolapsing on every corner. Can I, uh, <laughs> can I come down now? I would really like to come down No, now. we're done with you. We're uh-huh. going back inside. Uh-huh. You're, All right. you're at the mercy of Grimace. Goodbye. Now. This is the end of your character. Oh, arc. man. Yeah. You could die up there, and we would never would follow up about it. <laughs> I'd rather not. Dennis, Dennis, we can't emphasize enough. We did not like you from the get-go. You came in too hot. It's the downfall of many a person we interact with. Goodbye forever. We, Everybody loves Raymond, and we love you, but fuck off. As Napoleon <laughs> said, I'll be fuck back. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so... What a day! That was a that was an interesting one. That was a weird one. I think I'm gonna yeah. Alex. Can you sign this? I want to go back to Bloomingdale's. I don't want to be in charge of the ass department anymore. No, I I don't know. I think I'm gonna leave you on the ass for at least another ten minutes. Uh, okay, Fine. just because I I, don't, I I need to talk to like a tattoo removal specialist to get this removed. Yeah, it doesn't look like Lolita ever finished the i guess collaboration yeah with Dennis. I, I can't i mean it's on my back as we established i can't see it how um, does it look no i'm i'm looking right at we're it we're looking so you have like all the stuff that, that dennis have. was doing yeah but then he literally like you know when you make a a mistake with pen so you can't and you just like scribble it he tried to do that with the tattoo gun yeah uh to multiple different spelling mistakes um and at a couple of points, he seemed to just start doodling. Yeah, I mean, oh. and I think Lolita's main contribution was, um, I'm just going to poke, don't mind this, but like here, uh, it, it's Einstein eating out your ass, unfortunately. Yeah, really like a Gene Simmons length tongue to yeah. be able to get from like your low back to your asshole. I will say Dennis's medieval style illuminations are stunning. And it fits. I was going to say, I think mine's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, Mike. Yours is really vanilla, yeah. Mike. Hey, I, I don't know about... It's just words. It's a little basic bitch for me. All right, me. listen. Yeah. I got a face tattoo. Yeah, it's been a crazy day. Yeah, I mean, anything that we didn't talk about, I mean, obviously, there are a couple more guest stars in this episode, Um, but you probably don't want to hear about those guys, right? You heard one? Give me another one. Fuck it, do them all. Okay, so we've got Drenda Sponeholtz. Great name. Excellent name. She plays Leanne. Uh, she has eight credits. She uh, started out in 1994 in a TV movie, I think, called The Search for One-Eyed Jimmy, and her last role was Cherry in 1999, regular movie. She also uh, was on a Law & Order. She was in the Paul Newman movie, Nobody's Fool. She has absolutely no web presence. She, in fact, after 1999, apparently, uh, changed her name. And, look, I'm a pretty good sleuth so i was able to track her down but i'm thinking that because she changed her name she probably doesn't want her spot blown up by the barome boys so let's leave it to ourselves um i just don't want like our fans to show up in her bushes of course not we can't let that happen again um basically uh the only like detail i will give about her is that she stopped acting in 1999 obviously and she was in real estate for a time but the rest of her life, mystery. Uh, otherwise, we've got Hamilton, the sales clerk, played by Phil Abrams, another heavy-hitting guest star, 163 roles Whoa. from 1994 to present. Um, this is interesting. His first role was Roseanne and Tom Behind the Scenes, an unauthorized docudrama centering on the romance and eventual breakup of Roseanne Barr and Tom Arnold. And interestingly enough, full circle moment, he was on The Connors as a guest star in 2020. That, that is pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Um, most recently, he was on an episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia uh, in 2023, so the most recent season. Finally, the woman returning the toaster is Peggy Doyle. She's best known for uh, having a small role in the movie Fletch, uh, but she's had 39 roles with lots of guest starring spots. Uh, she stopped working in 2001. Um, and died in 2006. Mike, I'm sorry. I know that you like when these guest actors work until they die on the set. I, I, do, I do enjoy that, actually. It makes me very you, happy. 
yeah, a very high standard of work, work ethic. So unfortunately, she had five good years where she was retired. Uh, um, but that's Peggy pity. Doyle. So those are the guest stars in this episode. Excellent. Fascinating or don't care. Uh, I think it's great yes. that we give these guys the uh, the Baron Boy bump. It is cool to learn about the, the tiny uh, parts in this show. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to add just one scene. I think uh, Ray Romano deserves a little credit here. Uh, because I've never really heard Ray sound angry before, but he really brought the rage out when he was talking with his parents in that one scene at their house. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I was impressed. It's uh, like a volume we have not heard from him. It sounded like it could be, if this was a long form like narrative show with, you know, like a... Continuity. Serialized? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like a serialized narrative arc could have been like a point of inflection for the show, like the end of the second act is changing the relationship. A turning point. The dynamic. About yeah. a toaster. If that was a normal person, I would have just said turning point. No, I like the way you said it. I, I think don't. it... <laughs> Let me ask one generally. Does, does Ray have any right to be upset here? No. Any right um, whatsoever? Not the way that he is. Uh, he, I, I think it's interesting that you called it rage, Alex. I, I saw it as like melting down in like a very like tantrum way. way yeah very like enough. the sense of entitlement that he has to this sort of recognition of the good things that he does and deborah calls it out uh later like it, it's it's two things it's he both needs their approval but also feels like he deserves it and that's where this sort of strong emotional reaction seems to be coming from when they don't give it to him and they sort of reject his gift so it it read to me uh, as as very like childish. Um, yeah, yeah. The line that kind of took me out of it because I was with that scene to Alex's point. It was like something we hadn't a dynamic we hadn't seen between Ray and Marie up until that point. But the line, "Do you know the time?" The thought, and then sort of just like trailed off of it, just like because uh, uh, uh. in my head I was like. What do you mean the thought? Like, it's a pretty simple and straightforward Merry Christmas, we love you names. It's not like, personalized. It's, not, it's a toaster. It's not exceptionally thoughtful. It like, wasn't even just about, for right? them. It was for the, like, everyone in the family. They've got them, like, mass printed. I also, I thought that was going to be a more larger point, too. I thought, like, the, the Marie was going to find out that he made it for everybody and was going to be offended. But that never, and that never happened. I could definitely see this episode going that direction. I thought that's what was going to happen when Robert yeah, saw mm-hmm too. the the one up at uh, Deborah's parents. I think also like to stay on that like the scene of Robert and Ray and Deborah in the kitchen and Deborah calling out. Maybe the question is why you're so desperate uh, for their approval. Robert uh, says something to the effect of like "nailed it, sis," which I thought was weird. Yeah, I noticed that too. It jutted out as, as something he would not usually call her. Yes. So it's weird. Because yeah. he goes back and forth kind of with Deborah. Sometimes Robert is kind of, or at least more so in the early episodes, maybe he's very like reserved around Deborah. And this is a completely different where he's very familiar with her, um, very comfortable with her on her side in this. Uh, it's It's an interesting. Well, was this yeah. before or after the episode where, like, they have the affair in the hot tub and, like, Robert has one of his ex-wife's old bikinis lying <laughs> around, but it's too small I, for Deborah, And he's like, <laughs> put it on. Yeah, I think you might be thinking of the fan fiction. Yeah, that, that is that was Barone. definitely yeah, the, so fan the fan fiction. <laughs> oh, yeah. Damn, yeah, you're fiction. right. That is that's, 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 real that's, for that that's really that's really steamy for the actual actual I mean, show, man. If anyone wanted yeah. to hear that fan erotic fan fiction episode, well, actually not super erotic. Um that fan fiction episode, they could go to postfund.org slash donate and pay what they want for lifetime access to the Baronis Zonus. Um but it unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see it on Peacock because it was never filmed for whatever reason. I wonder why. Yeah. But no tragedy. But that, this is in no in a completely separate timeline from that episode. Okay, okay Mike. Anything else that you wanted to hit? Yeah, on? I wanted to hit on the hot clothes. It was a single line, but it actually made me chuckle a little bit. 
which was the um, Frank and Marie get arrested, which is just such a love it. I absolutely love it that um, that they that they went all the way to get arrested for to, to save uh, Ray's feelings. Um, but just the final scene of just the phone call and Deborah being like, so your parents got arrested in possible theft of a toaster. And Ray's just like, they do care. That, yeah, that made me chuckle. Sweet. I also, that is a great, what close. I loved about the framing yeah. of that is that when Deborah went to like pat Ray's head, it didn't cut to a different angle. So you could also see Deborah or like zoom out or yeah. anything. You just saw Deborah's hand like, come in from <laughs> from stage left and just tap his head almost like patronizingly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the other moment that i wanted to hit on was just the the a shot that we have not seen come from raymond i think ever was when frank was tearing open the boxes and then he was like oh i gotta check the storeroom marie keep distracting him yeah. And then he runs into the room. You see the pan out of just a sinful glut of these toasters, and then just Frank's like, mm. "Holy crap! That uh, that's a lot. That hit, that that got me too. That that's a an lot iconic of work for one shot. That is like an iconic shot. Like I feel like if you see like uh you know on my nine or something like we got everybody loves Raymond tonight. Like the super cut will be like painting the house and getting it on Marie. Um, you know, like, I don't know, other thing, maybe Marie's sculpture or something. Well, they probably wouldn't put that in a commercial. But I get what you're um, saying, yeah. But They this, would get Marie going, oh my God, I'm a lesbian. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, this pan up of Frank in the stock room is, I feel like, a classic shot. And we also have the classic line in this episode of the, what contest in hell did I win? So this is a, a pretty well-regarded episode or at least well remembered episode for sure for sure uh in the pantheon oh one more detail that i just wanted to point out before we move off of it and move on to the barometer um there is a security guard in bloomingdale's after marie tries to wrestle away the toaster from the other woman uh she runs away she runs past the security guard he does not do anything um that is richard a romano in his second cameo on the oh, show hey yeah, ray's brother so we have now consumed three pieces of media in which Richard A. Romano appears. Two episodes. Wait, you said it was his second cameo. Yeah. So what was the third piece of media? You well, consumed? also in the Baroness Zonas, we talked about the 2004 film Welcome to Mooseport, which stars Ray Romano and Gene Hackman. Uh, Richard Romano is also in that. That's the movie where uh, that convinced Gene Hackman to never act again. So it's a pretty. <laughs> interesting that is artifact a, is a legendary movie oh i love that yeah it's also in the baronis zonas obviously postfund.org slash donate but i think that's everything that i wanted to talk same about. here oh sorry one more oh. line uh ray by in the very start of the episode engraved toaster mary xmas ray has the line i xed out the name of the birthday boy which I thought was fun. No, that is a good line. Criticizing criticizing Deborah for using foil wrapping. Foil wrapping metal toaster. Why don't you just wrap it in toast? I thought that was funny. So Schneider, as I'm sure yeah. you remember, the yes. barometer is our scale from one to ten on which we rate Ray's performance as a husband, son, brother, father, um, gift giver, with ten being the great dads of sitcom history. You're uh, Carl Winslow, Uncle Phil, Danny Tanner. Alex, can you give me another good dad from TV history? Um, my dad, if he was on TV. <laughs> Has your dad ever oh, appeared on television? That. Sweet. No, but if he was, he'd be a 10. Not even in like the background of a news report or something? Not that I know of. So I think I'm not going to be able to accept that answer as, as <laughs> well, endearing as it bad. is. You're accepting it. <laughs> <laughs> all right has he been on like an instagram live before i mean can we is it a youtube video nope nothing <laughs> there's it's no like a vampire of him. <laughs> he doesn't show up on i film. may as well have been conceived uh without a father you would have never you, know he exists but he's great have you ever <laughs> been watching tv and he walks in front of the tv in front of your field of vision he's actually very respectful to <laughs> let me watch what i'm watching he, that's why he's a 10 yeah uh, 
Fine. Uh, and one being the bad men of television history, your uh, Tony Sopranos, your Walter White's, Don Draper's men who actively harm their families. Mike, give me another example of a bad man uh, d- from TV history. D- Darth Vader. Perfect. I mean, I'm sure there's been one of those Star Wars shows where he's popped there's up. There's been right? a lot of those Star Wars shows where he's popped up, believe actually. It. Shockingly. I believe it. So that works. Yeah. Uh, so, Schneider, that's how it works. Um, this is actually good because we have four people here. Normally, we, you know, always happen somebody has to leave during this. And by law, we need at least three. So I think we'll be fine. Nobody. Right. Actually, guys, I got a, I got a call about that Amazon package. It apparently didn't. Sorry, they what? Need a, they need a fifth per person. Point of contact. Point of contact. Yeah, that's it. They need a fifth point of contact. So I'm just going to. Go down there and pretend I'm another guy. And where are you returning? What, where is this package going? I don't, this is the one that you sent to us. No, but what service is delivered? Oh, Ramazon. Sorry, Ramazon. The Ramazon package. I apologize. All right, I got to go. Bye. Not even a good pun, but we have to keep it. We got to keep it going. There's, there's okay. one piece of this. One yeah. piece of the puzzle. Okay, well, good. I mean, Mike is uh, would have been superfluous to this process anyway, so I think we can... Oh, hold on. Let me get that. Uh, oh, God, my, I'm, I'm being paged. Hold on. Oh, God. I mean, reach to the door. <laughs> oh, Lewis, stop. Oh, hey. uh, uh, okay, I see you. Stop paging <laughs> me, please. Okay, yo, I'm sorry there. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. Hey, I uh, just got a question here. I think here. we need to talk about this system. Yeah, I listen, you're the one that wanted to do the uh, the modifications and everything. I was very I happy to make it happen. <laughs> anyway, boss, I just wanted to ask, uh, are we still getting paid on a bi-weekly schedule or... Uh, no, lump sum. Oh, oh lump sum. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> annual. Up got front. you, Kenny. No problem. A- I mean, annual. A- 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 maybe go. missing a few yeah, letters. I mean, it's there. Lump sum up. Oh, front. what's going on here, though? Uh, this is, uh, that's pretty presumptuous that you would come and this is sort of a oh, this seems private to be, this seems to be leadership well. meeting. Oh, but yeah. this is, you know, where we record Everybody Loves, Everybody Loves Raymond. Oh, sorry. Where we recap every episode of Everybody Yeah, no, I know the, I know the show. You play it every every week on, on the loudspeakers and everyone that doesn't yeah, we, listen has to go to jail. I, I, I understand. Yeah, play the podcast on Good the citizen. loudspeaker. Put the TV. Uh, uh, put the episode on the eyes wide shut down. Every yep. screen. Uh-huh. Eyes wide. Well, that's a, if your choice. If you want to bump, you know, pay six ninety nine to get eyes wide shutted, then that's fine. Is that what that is, or Clockwork Orange? Oh, one of those two. They well, called it. The, they called it the something different in Manitoba. Really, you didn't have Clockwork Orange in Manitoba? No. Okay. Well. I'll tell I'll tell you about it later. They call it the Clockwork Putin. Anyway, let's move on. I don't know if that's <laughs> You don't know, don't know that's what? One to one, Lewis. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I didn't name it. I'm just telling you what they called it. We're not Canuckwork Orange? Oh that's Is much that better? better. That's what they should have called it. That's much better. Well, Trudeau won't return my calls. But again, I, I'm I'm not in the movie industry. I don't I don't I don't name these things, Mr. Boy. <laughs> Lewis, please. I mean, I want to ask you to leave, but I kind of want to hear. I mean, we're doing the barometer. Oh you know, yeah, you guys. Oh, I know. 10. I know the deal. You guys go ahead. I'll just sit here and, and listen. I'll go. No, I mean, I kind of, I, I kind of want to hear what you, what you have to say. Are you cool to to give us your rating at the oh, end? Oh sure, yeah, no problem. Okay, cool, awesome, and uh, just that. Just sit in that chair over there. That one we Ooh, repoed yep. earlier from a an ass modifier, so it might yeah. be. Uh, difficult sit, but I think you can do it. A little uncomfy, but we'll live. So, Schneider, you're Ooh. the guest. Would you like to go first oh. and share <laughs> share your rating? <laughs> yeah, if uh, Lewis could maybe stop. Oh, sorry, making those noises. Sorry. I I I know uh, that um he's getting paged too, so it's it's going to be difficult for him. But he's yeah, it's it's a little distracting because it's the ass modifying chair that he is presently in sort of a contorted downward dog head down ass up sort of situation yes hey it's just uh, the chair man uh so i wish if i had foresight i would have gone back and listened to the barometer in the other two episodes i was in just to you sort don't of need to do that get a, <laughs> get a sense of uh like what my benchmarks mm-hmm. are like what my do you want me to look it up are. i can look it up you can do that yeah oh please it's do. actually on our website um if you go to postfund.org slash Raymond and you click on the folder icon, 
It has all the barometer scores up to season two. And you were oh, on awesome. to, I want to say 17 or 19. Uh, I was on the ride along yeah. episode. Uh, the ride along was 17. So you gave Ray an eight. Okay, I do remember rating him highly yes. in that episode. And then you were also on your first episode. Do you remember which one that was? The the uh, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Was it Ditka or Bradshaw? Yes. Yeah. That one. No, they were. They were all sick. Yeah, Deborah's sick. Deborah's sick yeah. is. Deborah's sick. I rated him lowly is, on that one. Uh, you gave him a seven on Deborah's. Yes. Sick. Yeah. yeah. Because he did. He really did try to do the right thing in that episode. So I, I guess I've been rating Ray very highly. Yeah, that's going to change. <laughs> uh, just such a sniveling little pathetic piece of trash in this episode. Uh, I hate him. <laughs> um, and you could say like, well, no, like, you know, he, he had a, the, the toaster was so thoughtful. Da, 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 da. It was just like this happened and then he kind of spiraled. But it's like if it's that easy to make him spiral, then it was never coming from a good place in the first place. Like there was a, a lot of discourse around uh, the Cursed Child after it came out. Um, Which for people who don't know the, what that is, are you talking about your child coming out of your? No, n- not not partner? my biological child. You're talking uh, about yourself who, coming out of your mother. No, no, no I'm talking about uh, the spinoff stage adaptation of the Harry Potter IP. Got it. Uh, it started as fan fiction, but then like received Rowling's blessing, and she was included as a co-writer. J.K. Simmons signed off on it. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, but Cedric Diggory, uh, be like becomes a fascist in the play. Like he joins the Death Eaters, and there was a lot of people trying to say like, you know, like look at like his life just spiraled out of control after he because there's a bunch of like time travel nonsense. Uh, after, uh, cause he survives the Triwizard Cup, uh, but he loses. I might be getting the plot details wrong. So if there's any like, nobody cares the comments, log off. I don't like No it. overlap. Um, uh. no overlap whatsoever. No. Um, he loses and that like throws him into a depressive funk that basically is just, you know, the modern analog would be some, you know, lonely dejected young white male who gets radicalized on 4chan. Mm-hmm. He just gets really sad about losing this tournament and turns to fascism. Wow. And people were like, Hey, if it was that easy to radicalize him, I don't think he was really a good guy in the first place. Like it really did not require that much to totally throw his life into a fascist funk. Mm-hmm. So if it was that easy to make Ray just such a sniveling little piece of shit, just to make him just like, yeah, then the gift was never coming from the right place in the first place, I think. Mm-hmm. Or maybe, I don't know, I'm downplaying the trauma of having Frank and Maria's parents. Maybe it fucks you up psychologically. Maybe I'm being insensitive right now. I don't know. I just know that in watching this episode, I did not like Raymond. Uh, he was like whining about the size of his nose that he saw in the reflection of the toaster and everything. It's just like, oh my God, pull yourself together, man. So I'm going to go. We didn't see him interact with the kids. I don't think the kids were in this episode at all. Um, right? Never maybe appeared. at Christmas in like a, in the background. I don't know. I didn't notice him either. So can't rate him as a father. Uh, his brotherly interactions were very passing. He got the gift and everything. But again, arguing that the gift maybe wasn't best place in the first place i'm gonna say a four just because he's having that energy around you just that sniveling pathetic energy that nobody wants that that's harmful yes i agree i think you you hit on the perfect analogy that uh using the harry potter play that is the perfect (laughs) analogy for understanding this and in fact it's the only one you could have used. So thank you for laying that out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, I think that was pretty good. I appreciate I it. Was good. Do you get Harry Potter in Canada? Oh, yeah. You call it Harry Potter, but yeah. Harry Putin? Harry Putin. <laughs> I'm telling you, can you please ask Trudeau to return my calls? I have good ideas. <laughs> He's mixed up with some stuff with India right now. <laughs> T- 
timestamp this. <laughs> um, evergreen. Um, th- Alex, where is Ray coming in for you this episode? Uh, he's not doing too hot with me either. Um, I think my favorite note I wrote was just, God, Ray is so fucking insecure. Um, <laughs> I think it's just like, on top of all the bullshit, he also just like, probably like three weeks before Christmas was just like a toaster that's engraved. And oh, great. I could just get one for everyone. And then now I'm done with Christmas. Deborah did mention it was two months. Yeah. Okay. Two months. So like even more like he just like he feels like it was not really from the heart and more from like, oh, great. I don't have to deal with this anymore. Uh, so and then like after that, you know, just the constant fear and complaining and the insecurity about whether or not they'll like it. He, he constantly challenges people who say that they like the present. Um and then just blowing up at his parents, even though that part I don't entirely disagree with. Like, I think it was wrong of, like, uh, Marie and Frank to just trade it in, especially so quick. Um, and, like, not even, like, talking to Ray about the toaster, like, having it in their house for him to see. Not even unboxing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, overall, just it's just a mess. It kind of felt like Marie and Frank were framed as the people who messed up in the second half of the episode but ray was just so fucking not like like just it was too much i'll give him a three and a half okay 3.5 thank you for bringing up that it was uh, ray purchased these toasters two months prior to christmas day um to go back to season three episode eight the article which we established ends on october 16th 1998 by looking at Schneider, two newspapers that were in the episode, we determined that the episode took place over four and a half months by looking at those historical events. That means Ray helped Andy uh, finish his article, and Andy, I guess, was on his mind. So, see, my theory is he started Toaster Gate with Andy. He said, you know, Andy's really been through it with this whole Sports Illustrated thing. I should get him something and, you know, the kids at home are asking about how Andy's doing with this whole thing. I think he really wants to know that they care about him. So I'm going to get Andy a toaster. And then he goes to the toaster store and he sees that, oh, wow, I can get a pretty good discount on toasters if I buy more than six. So he goes ahead and he buys one for everyone in his family. And that's sort of my internal logic as to where this episode falls in Ray's life. So thank you for bringing that up, Alex. Yeah, and that also makes it even sillier when he's like, it had your son's name on it and your grandkids and their love. I don't know why I made him Christian Bale's Batman. Uh, (laughs) But if we accept your logic that this all started with Andy. Yes, and no reason why you shouldn't. So, Adam, what do you think about the, uh, what's your rating coming in at? Well, Lewis, as I mentioned, I found Ray to be pretty terrible in this episode. I just think the entitlement that he shows towards Marie and Frank, I think Alex made a good point that Marie and Frank are sort of framed as the bad guys in this episode. Ray could have said up front, the toaster is engraved as like on the card in the gift or something, or given them the toaster outside of the original box, something to indicate, hey, don't leave this toaster unopened. That's the sort of the logical thing he could have done to avoid this situation. The situation wasn't avoided. He did find out that they returned the toaster without opening it, and he reacted very poorly, I thought. So for the reasons I mentioned earlier, basically, I feel like he was kind of a nightmare in this episode, very self-involved, very just, I I just wasn't a fan. I'm going to give him a 2.5. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. So, Lewis, yeah. So, okay, where, where I guess that's my turn now. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, God. Hey, uh, I'm giving him a ten. I, I think, I <laughs> think he did flawlessly. He did flawless Why? this episode. Hey, listen, I, I don't know about you guys, but if my if my family brought me a toaster with everybody's name on it, that'd be great. That way, I don't need to look at it, and I, I, uh, I'll, I can, I don't have to forget anybody's name, especially when I'm making them toast. I could go, all right, this is Jeffrey's toast. It's, it's, I. I don't know. I think this is quite uh, quite kind of him, honestly. I think it's a great 
Lewis, how often are you making toast for five people? Uh, anytime I'm making toast, I make at least five five pieces. That's my that's my go to. Five pieces. Five pieces of toast. Five so pieces. you have to run the toaster five times, but wouldn't three three, three times. times. Yeah. Thank you. But wouldn't it be more efficient to put a six piece of toast in there no. and you're not wasting the energy of that second slot? No, no, no. They don't tell you this, but actually the, the little loaves of bread actually come in slices that are divisible by five. So if you use if you do six every time, then then you can't complete it the next time or the final time. And that's just that's just no good. Yeah, but that that's Canada. Things are different down I mean, your bread comes in a box, right? I've it's been established I've been here since the fourth grade. <laughs> I think that I, I think that I've been here for a while. It, yeah, but your framework for bread is still and always will be. I guess Canadian. you're right. I've been traumatized by the Canadian uh, by the Canadian. <laughs> I say traumatized. <laughs> but also, I just want to explore, Lewis, that you said you make at least five pieces of toast every time you That's make correct. toast. But also that this is why my question was: When are you making toast for five well, people? So every time you make toast for yourself, are you going and finding at least, you know, two to four other people whom you could also give? Or is course. five well, no, five the <laughs> unit per person? So if you have five no, people, no, no, over, no, no, you no. need that's, to that's make thirty pieces of toast. That's too much toast. No, I go, I go, and I, <laughs> I go, and I make the toast. And if I have the people with me, I serve it to them right there. And if not, I go out in the, in the wilderness you and I'm like, it? hey, who wants, oh. who wants toast? <laughs> you just go out into the wilderness. And out the wilderness. How do they name? All right, your name is Jeffrey. Here you go. Oh, are okay. You, that's, that's and you're that's actively like engraving new I names don't onto the toaster. What's <laughs> so confusing about this uh, this situation? Let's start at the beginning. <laughs> so you do we really have to? All right. No, I mean, I don't think no, we, we have. We don't right. have to. Can we not? I think we've established though that. Lewis's rating uh, is obviously it's official and must go on the yeah. record, but is to in spirit be disregarded. I, I, I don't strongly know. disagree. Let's I let think, him finish. I think Let's Marie and Fra- I think he's a, he's right to be upset with his parents not appreciating his hard earned gift, and they they they're jerks to him, and he's jerks back to them, and it's great. It's good. It's good television, and I think that he's in his right to do it. People are allowed to have emotions, even if they're not positive, and I think that's what Ray's doing. And I don't think that's bad. Okay, he he did sort of ben. have a pretty rational reason at the yeah. end there. Yeah. Although he did yeah, start nice. from that a was, place. Hey, 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 Canadians are there. smart. You, uh, I, I, I take a, I, I take issue with your surprise there, but I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'll take. The, I'm, I'm not. We didn't think that you weren't yeah. smart. We thought oh, you were okay. insane. We That's thought fair. you started a from a place there. of I make five pieces of toast every time I make toast. Yeah, it's so divisible by five. Your credibility was strained to the, at the start. I just have one more question, Lewis. I don't want to like belabor yeah. the point, but Ray did mention in the cold open. Uh, why don't you just wrap it in toast? I- is this something you've Wrapping ever done? Toast? Yeah, it saves, saves money. <laughs> Bread is cheaper than wrapping paper, so you just make a lot of toast. No, no follow up. You just questions. make a lot of toast and you cover the thing. It's great. And thank you. That CD that you put out, wrapping about toast. Yeah. How did that do? Was that like number one? Did you win a Juno for that? I won. Uh, I won the Manitoba Got Talent Award. Yeah, Manitoba Got Talent. Manitoba <laughs> Got Talent. I was there on uh, MGT. Who are the judges on that? Buble, obviously. You got Buble. You got a moose. You got. Uh, <laughs> you got. You got Any actually moose, Simon. Simon Cowell comes out every once of in a course. while. It's pretty great. Yeah, he does all of the franchise. Yeah, yeah, and then we got Drake. What was the prize? Uh, Syrup. Lots of syrup. (laughs) Yep. Canada. (laughs) Yum. Okay, Lewis. All right. right. Well, I've I've given you my two cents, and my yes has been rearranged, so I'm heading out. Wait, 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 Lewis. What? Can you please, I know you do a little math on the side. Can you please tell us what the average of 2.5, 3.5, 10, and 4 are is? 2.5, 3.5, 2.5, yeah. 3.5, 4. It's, it actually comes out to be 5. Really? It comes out to be exactly dead smack in the middle, five. Hmm. Reactions? That seems... Too high. A little high, but probably, yeah. Math I don't mean, lie. right to me in the middle, you know. This is like when you say the average income in the United States is like $220,000. You're saying we should be taking just the median from like, now on? 
Yeah, 10 fucks are making <laughs> <laughs> hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. Lewis, yours was insane, and it's throwing off the average. It will. All in a day's work. I give Ray some breaks. It's, it, 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 it's on its work if you can get it. All right, Lewis. Um, oh. I can tell you're fully rearranged because you started face down, ass up, and you're now ass up, face gone. So I'll let you go. And don't worry, okay. your lump sum will be shoved in your box pretty soon. Hey, that's how I would actually hear it. All right, goodbye, guys. Right. Bye, Lewis. Bye. Yeah, actually, you know what, Alex? I think I do want to keep working in the ass office. Good. I wasn't going to let you go. Great. Perfect. Hey, guys, I'm back. So uh, we do the barometer yet? or? Yeah, we actually are done with All it. Right. We didn't All right. Need well, you, so. Let's just close out then. Okay. Yeah, let's end the episode. Schneider. Thank you for coming Thank on the show. You. I know it's of course it's always fun, always. I know a blast. it's a challenge to be around all this local government fervor that happens. You know, bills being passed, other things being passed. Just we appreciate you, and we appreciate you bringing your perspective. And hopefully, this one doesn't result in as many hashtag Blue Lives Matter comments as your last appearance did. Mm. That's unfortunate. But thank you anyway. Well, you, you wait. Hold on. You mentioned earlier that you have comment moderation. Still on. see him. So you Still don't see him come in. Just reject him. <laughs> you don't let through. Uh, what was it that you said you were censoring? Uh, well, criticism. See, Blue lives. Blue lives matter. We're only interested in comments that are negative towards us, and those were just kind of general statements. So we leave those up. That's fine. Oh, so just general head assery is allowed. Yeah, of course. As long as they don't mention <laughs> okay. us by name. Well, and the hashtag helps the algorithm. Yeah. So. Okay, so I'm going to go and post uh, a full uh, text copy of uh, Peter Kropotkin's The Conquest for Bread, a uh, classic of European anarcho-communist theory, and can I'm going to add a hashtag uh, before every single word. Can you uh, hit a control F on that and make it a conquest of toast? <laughs> gotcha. Just to be on <laughs> That would be ideal, yeah. Okay, well, I think that the only other thing left to do is to mention, you know, you can find us on Instagram and threads at barone.zone and facebook.com slash baronezone. You can email us, raymond at postfund.org. Obviously, we've mentioned the baronus zonus, postfund.org slash donate. Alex, anything else, or are we ready to sign off? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's just time for our famous sign-off, which... The guest will begin, yeah. as is Trish I'm tradition. Everybody loves Raymond. And, and we, we love you. you.